Okay. Good morning, everyone. Hey. Technical error. Okay, we're on. Okay. Got to hit the right button. Good morning, everyone. Uh, welcome to the Marion Township Board of Supervisors workshop meeting for February 2022. Uh, at this time, I'd like to ask everyone to please rise for the Pledge of Allegiance. Pledge of Allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the Republic for which it stands, one nation under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Okay, for anyone who is interested, there are masks and hand sanitizer at the front of the room. Anyone wishing to address the board through public comment, please be sure to sign in at the front of the room and to speak clearly and directly towards the microphone, stating your name and address prior to your comment. Uh, do we have any public comments at this time? I signed the name, but uh, I'll talk about the 29. Perfect. Thank you, Don. Uh, we do not have anybody on the Zoom meeting at this time, Sue. Okay, make sure you check it a few minutes yep. later. Yeah, I, I have it up here. Okay. Okay. Moving into the, the main items for the agenda, we have uh, the first item, which is Act 537. The SEO has started doing these inspections in the Northwest District. Um, we did get an uh, email back from Tim Wagner at the DEP. I'm not sure if either of you or both of you saw that, but they did comment on uh, why and what the inspections are and that it's really uh, kind of a terrible idea in their, their assessment of it, I'll say, mm -hmm. to exclude anybody because it is a required inspection and any of the other inspections that are being done are probably related but dissimilar enough that they're not applicable. So that's the official comment from the department on that. You wrote that email? Okay. Yeah. So basically in a nutshell, because of the last couple of meetings, we had a couple of farmers that wanted to know because of their other inspections, if they could be excluded from the septic system inspection. And the answer was no from the DEP, period, end of the statement. The bottom line is we have to be compliant. This is not from us. This is from the state that your septic system has to be inspected. That's it. There's no exceptions for that. If we do anything otherwise, What's going to happen is we're going to get fined, and that's not a good thing. Because if we get fined, it goes back to the taxpayers. Essentially, when we, when you guys pay your taxes, when we all pay our taxes, that's what pays the bills for any kinds of fines. So everyone has to have their septic system inspected. There's no exception. Yes. Follow-up point on that. Uh, I will be reaching out to Colleen. I did not get a chance to do that. I have a memo typed up to her. I'll CC everybody when I do it. I just yep. simply haven't sent it yet. And she's going to be doing um, the, she's um, going to be doing the income, income study. study. And the income study is going to be useful for <clears throat> other things too. Correct. So that's going to be useful yeah. for primarily two things. Yeah. It's going to be useful for uh, grants as we move through the Act yep. 537 process that we're currently on the hook for. Yep. Uh, and it also gives us footing to make an argument for affordability if we find that it is a, a wildly unfeasible project from a cost standpoint. Uh, the other benefit is we may be able to use this. The, the income studies are only good for a certain amount of time, but mm -hmm. this may be applicable for other grant applications. For example, if we go to apply for funding for, I don't know, road work stuff or with the ARP mm -hmm. money that's later on in the agenda, that would be a good... Uh, mm -hmm good selling point for why we would need the funding. Yep. And then I sent you guys an email about the USDA grants. Mm -hmm. So yep. that would be a huge, huge benefit, especially depending because they had different stages of where we would fall as far as funding goes. So. Okay. Yeah. Yes. I have one concern question about this. Certainly. Yep. Uh, about so the concern is why did they do the village first? It's not going to be eight years later. Well, it's only going to be, six. it's going to be three. The first, the first pump out is staggered one year at a time. And the reason that we started, and this actually, this predates me. So I'm filling you in on what was filled in to me. When the act was originally put together and that one lot management ordinance was written, they wanted to start with the, the least dense populations first to be able to get the program established and underway rather than starting with comparatively the hardest thing first, getting the baseline in and then working to where it was going to be the most complicated. And that was the rationale that was given to me when, when I came on board and was asking questions about the Act 537. 
It doesn't prohibit you from getting your septic system pumped out when you need it pumped out. You That's just the deadline. Right, right. right. Yeah. You could certainly do it whenever you need to. So like I probably need to do it this summer and I'm not in that that uh, group, but you, you just have to call to set up uh, for the SEO to come in. Yeah, and that's, that's it. So that's, you can get it pumped out whenever you need to. It's just that it's just set up to keep people on track for those people that don't or haven't or really aren't on any kind of a schedule to get it done. Yeah, and that's that's precisely why we sent the letter out to everybody rather than just sending it out to one of the, the areas first. There have been yeah. a couple of people I know on Main Street that have had their systems pumped out and had it inspected by the SEO. Yes, sir. Cool. I saw an accident in Shannon where the law that you have to pump it every three years. You're trying to say that law has it that it has to be inspected by an independent inspector? So the, the Act 537 requires that it is inspected. It doesn't specifically outline the time frame, but it, it, it outlines that it has to be inspected and it has to be by somebody who is a licensed, certified, uh, basically somebody approved by the Department of Environmental Protection to do that service. So if you get an independent pump out that is, in, that is certified to be inspection, that should be good enough? No, no. because okay. the ordinance does not have it written that way. <clears throat> so then it costs me more money. What happens if the person I get that pumps it out is certified, but yet if I call and I got to line two things up, so I got to pay the guy to pump it out to wait till he shows up? Who's going who's gonna to do that expense? So you want to coordinate so that they're there at the same time. Oh, yeah, but, but right. coming in the real world, how's that going to work with everyone with you some common sense yeah. there to get two so, different entities there all yeah. the time? So Usually I, it works out. Yeah. I, I've had that situation too. And, and I know other people that coordinate with the prior SEO. So I, it's not as difficult as you think it is. It's just a matter uh, of- I work with people right. too. It's hard right. enough to get two people together. Right. Three. Yeah. Well, it, and one, right. one of the other things to consider, and I want everybody to understand this, is this this is something that is required by state law. It has to be inspected, whether it's with the pumper or with the SEO. One of the other things that a lot of people I don't think are, are fully grasping here is there are underlying costs of what we have to supply to the department. We have to make sure that people are actually doing this. We have to keep track of that. There is pass-through billing for things with permits if you need repairs. There's the act of sending the letters out. There's reports that we have to file. There are things that are happening kind of behind the scenes. And we want to make sure that much like with everything else is if it's an individual incurring that cost or a component of that cost, then they're the one paying for well, it. Where's the law that says it has to be an independent inspector? It's, it's open for interpretation, admittedly. Oh, so there's okay. none there. Okay. But, All right. but, but. And, and hear me out on yeah. this, and I'll, I'll turn it over yeah. to you in a second, Irene. When you look at the actual numbers of what the, the administrative aspects of this cost, if we opened it up to just letting every, every pumper that's a certified inspector do it, there is still going to be roughly about two-thirds-ish of the cost of having the SEO do it. So you'd still probably have a $25 or $35 Thing on the tax bill rather than the $50 once a year. Uh, but there are other complications that arise with that. There's, and I'd have to cite the actual DEP stuff, but um, the pumper would have to register with the township and they'd have to file things with us to be able to do that, to be able to submit on behalf of Marion Township. So it's not quite as easy as just having the pumper come out, look so at it. Gonna, and, you're not going to grant an independent pumper? Right now, the ordinance does not allow for that. That is something we are considering. The ordinance that was written says that it has to be the SEO that inspects it or a representative on behalf of the SEO. That is something that is within our power to change, but we need to make sure that if we make that change, that we consider all the things that are going into it and we don't solve one problem and create two more. But if I get the, if I get a pumper that's licensed to do it and it don't pass. You'd have to have the SEO out anyway. No, you have to get this township sewer inspector. That's, 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 the that's the SEO. But it wouldn't be the guy that you have here. Yes, it is. Yes, it is. It is. Or one of his associates. Yeah, it would have yeah. to be the sewage enforcement officer on behalf of the township. Any yeah. of the, the this, permitting or repairs have to go through the SEO. So you're saying that a sewage enforcement officer is the guy that's doing this inspection? Correct. Yeah. Or somebody from his firm. In the past, that would have been Gary or. Right. If you're familiar with Gary. Right. Yeah. This is just same same sort of thing, just with a different different individual this time and with a slightly uh, added dynamic in the sense that he actually, when you get a pump, has to inspect it once every 
four years or so. If we made the change to allow the 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 company that's coming out to do your pump up, if they did the inspection, they'd have to raise their prices anyway because we'd have to have them do all the paperwork, uh, submit it to the state, no, submit no, it no, to no. us. Oh, no, 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 that's no. not even what would happen. <clears throat> so roughly how many homes are affected? There are 400 and over four, a little over 400 okay. properties that have septic systems in Marion Township. Okay. So here's here's the situation. If we allow private pumpers to do that, I'm sorry, 500. If we allow private pumpers to do that. They have to show us proof of certification. They have to show proof of insurance. Then they have to get us the paperwork from the inspection. That still needs to be submitted to Allen because we do not have the manpower here or the computer program to keep track of who's compliant. Again, the, the issue yeah. that Peter had raised- That's what I mean. Right. They would probably right. increase their prices right. because of all the additional work. Right, so, to, so Alan uh, still has to manage the program right. because we cannot do it. Yeah. The amount of work Sue and I have been doing lately is just astronomical. Now, wait a second. Yeah. You say you don't have the computer to do it. No. Well, that you don't have nothing to take me to court to, to enforce it. No, the no, S no, no, that's no, no, why no, we no. that's why we have I the SEO. I don't have a DEP's computer program to manage the data for all this paperwork and all these files and all this information coming in. We have enough work to do at this township without having to monitor who's compliant with this program. That's who's, who's going to the you? SEO. That yes. sewer, you don't have enough paperwork. Who's going to report that's that's why we have the sewer, the sewer enforcement, enforcement officer. officer doing this work mm -hmm. for us. Because yeah, if you don't have the computer to do it, oh, yeah. that's does. why he, Alan does. does. Alan has the program in place. This is something that he does for multiple townships. This is what his profession is, and this is what he has set up to do. So why not give the person who has the best ability to do the best job? That's where we're at with this. We cannot keep track of all this data. It would cost us probably it would cost seven us to ten thousand dollars to install a program just to keep up with this data, plus pay another person at least, I would say, five to 10 hours a week to manage the program. That's another five to $10,000 to pay another person to keep track of all this information, to chase down the homes, to chase down the data, to chase down the pumpers, to do all that stuff in order to keep track and be compliant with the DEP. The other part of that is if we're not they will come again and fine us. They have made this absolutely crystal clear that they will fine us. They already have sent us warning letters. The other part of this is also, um, if we go with an individual pumper, will the uh, only way I will have, I will allow, well, I would vote for an individual pumper to sign off on it is if we allow Alan to veto that septic inspection. Because during the last meeting that, that I was here for, Alan said he has received reports that just are just basically blank, a line through it, and it writes pass. To me, that is not an inspection. You have to go through detail and mark off each thing and make sure that they are compliant. The problem, again, is it's not that we are doing this to you. We have to be compliant with, with the state, period, end of the statement. If you have a septic system, if you have anything that collects your poop and your pee, it has to be inspected. That's it. And we all poop and pee. There's no way around this. We have to do it because the DEP is breathing down our neck. The last thing I want to do is draw more attention to this. Yeah. We, we don't want to have to spend any more money. Trust me. We have enough of a headache in this office with, with all that. We don't want to have to do this, but we have no choice. As you know, I was pretty much against this. I thought that, like you do, that the, the pump out people could do it. But the letter we got from DEP, they're saying no way. They want it. They want all the paperwork. They want every T crossed, every every I dotted. And again, we don't have the manpower to do it. But that's not Mary. That's not Mary. They are not permit. So, permit. so we're so under. Hold on. We're under a microscope. Hold on. So we're under I actually a microscope I, because yeah, of the yeah, prior administration. Yes. Permit. Permit. We really are. We are under their microscope. They watch everything we do concerning yeah. pee and poo. So yeah, if we don't do what they want us to do. DEP is not coming here. If you have a cluster of houses that are together, there's an issue. But I'm suffering because of that. 
No. No, DEP doesn't care if it's one house next to the other or one house five miles away from the other one. The only thing DEP cares about is the black and white, do you have an on-lot system, yes or no? And if the answer is yes, RAC 537, it is supposed to be inspected. So what's the fine if we don't do that? If we do not do that, we could be fined up to $300 a day for, not, for, 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 yep. for just yep. general non-compliance. If we are not compliant with the ordinance, we could be fined in that respect. If we are not enforcing it for you, but we're enforcing it for Mervyn or somebody else, we are suddenly in a state where we're playing favorites. We cannot enforce differently for one person rather than another because it is a, uh, it, it's just, it's a massively bad idea and it's, it's illegal. Um, so just back to, back to your point, why some other townships aren't. I actually talked to our solicitor about that because I had that same question is why is this happening here, but not other places? It is. It is happening yeah. other places. There are some places that have not received uh, kind of the, the enforcement action to do it. The Act 537 has been around since like the 60s or 70s. It's been around for ages. Some places got in plans very quickly. Marion was not one of those places. The places that had the plans in quickly have just kind of gone along on their current ones that they have. They don't necessarily have to enforce certain things because they have not gotten hit with a review. They have to go through and renew it periodically. That's, that's going to happen. I think he said Shillington was one of the places where they don't have to inspect. They will at some point. It's only a matter of time. Marion is not in that same situation. Marion limped along with the county plan, didn't really put anything in. And because of that, we are in the situation that we're in, both with the on-lot inspections and with the sewer. This is a, a long-standing, long-running thing that has just been kicked down the line, and now we're feeling the pain for yeah. it. And I'm not, I'm just trying to yeah. answer your questions yeah. a little bit. Well, what if, see, we, 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 we report or talk to Hopkins Township, whether it be um, North Heidelberg, or all the townships around us doing this? Everybody in the state of Pennsylvania is subject to Act 537. Whether They're subject, but are they doing this? That's, I, I don't know the that. answer off the top of my head. However, I do know that if they are not, the next time that they go through a review with the DEP, which is once every couple of years is what it's supposed to be. Um, I want to say it's probably like 10, 10 or 15 actually, yeah, but I, either way. Um, whenever they go through that review the department will do the same thing that they did with us when we submitted the plan they will go through it with a fine tooth comb and they will say you don't have this you don't have this you have this but have you been enforcing it can you show us evidence of the fact that you have been observing the on-lot management and the inspection requirements have you done this that all is going to happen for those places if they're not currently doing it i want to make this abundantly clear at some point in the future they will there will probably be public meetings at those places when their board of supervisors or city council or whoever has to introduce this to their constituents it is a thing that it happens in the state of pennsylvania so i'm not yeah, yeah. i'm not asking questions here. yeah i'm not trying to be a wise yeah yeah no. friend, okay yeah okay so if I get someone in to pump it out every three years mm -hmm. and we certify that from, to inspect it, and I have that at home in my office in my procession, DEP comes in and they're still going to find me, or is that, a, is that a great point? So they, technically speaking, DEP would find us, not you necessarily, if we have a, a huge number of people that are non-compliant. The likelihood that the DEP, and I, I hate to say this necessarily, the likelihood that the DEP is going to find the township for an individual, one person being non-compliant is pretty low. That However, is, but, but we, but we yeah. have to then enforce against you. Our, our hands are kind of tied. If you're non-compliant, we have actions that we have to take. It's no different than property or maintenance. Or am I out of compliance if I get certified? It has to be because, submitted to because, the state. And I have the paper. Yeah. Because you, you've done it. You've gotten inspected. Let's, let me, let me use yeah. the, I'll use a car for an analogy. If you, you have to have your state inspection on your car. I'll ignore emissions for, for the right. whole thing. But if you take it somewhere, a buddy of yours that's a mechanic, and he says, yeah, I did the inspection. Here's a slip of paper. But he doesn't actually file it with the state. You had an inspection done. You didn't actually get it inspected in, in the eyes of the law. So if you got pulled over and they asked you for your license and registration and said, hey, I noticed your car's out of inspection, do you think the police officer would be okay with that slip of paper that you have in your office? No, it has to be the sticker. It, well, by the piece of paper, if it's inspected, I don't have to get my truck inspected and get it inspected and get another guy to certify well, that it's inspected. Think, think about it this way. The inspection that your mechanic is doing to get that sticker is the inspection that the SEO is doing on your tank to get that sticker. There's right. no sticker involved. Well, if you buy that and was certified to inspect, if I choose a person like that, it's, it's you the, don't it's, have to get your car to another guy to get inspected. It's, it's the ordinance and the fact that it's being filed or not being filed. 
Like if you want to really boil it down to its simplest term, if you have the, the pumper do it, that's great. You could have a pumper come out once every year and inspect it, and you don't have to have that, have the SEO come out. So if I get the thing, get a DEP number for sword inspection, make a copy, keep a copy, and no. send it to them, no. No. <laughs> short short answer. The rules, the rules of the DEP are just yeah. so ridiculous. Yeah. That it has to be when we looked at all when I looked at all of this, yeah. looking at it from your point of view, I was like, what the hell are they doing? Why did why do they have this rule, this rule, this rule? But they do. And so we're our hands are tied. Yeah, and so one, really one thing are. I will it's ridiculous. The DEP says from from A to Z. You know what? We get nothing done. Huh? You're, so, you're right. So, so Jim, just, just <laughs> one thing right. to add is one of the things that's within our power is, I, I actually, wait, wait, I have a PowerPoint wait. that's partially together on this. Yeah. Um, there are things that come down from the federal government. They're, they issue guidelines, policies, regulations to each of the states. Right. The states then, in our case, the DEP, takes that and creates things like the Act 537, the Clean Streams Law, which trickles down to us. They give us the what and the why, and we have to implement the how. And there are some guidelines about that. One of the things that we do have at our discretion is we could have individual pumpers do it as long as they're state certified. But we also then have to be respectful to the fact that they have to be um, re essentially registered with the township. They have to provide proof of insurance. They have to do all, all sorts of things. And it still has to go through the SEO anyway. Mm -hmm. So you still have all the costs of the SEO minus like the actual time and mileage of going out and peering at the, the septic tank. You still have all of those underlying costs and you've added another layer of things that the, the pumpers have to do with the township. And there was a pumper, I uh, forget what company it was that somebody, was it Yusu you were in contact with? Or we got an email from somebody that they were like, we don't even like doing the inspections. Oh, well, yep. Like we'll do it, but we don't really want to. We'd prefer that the SEO do it because of just the complexity, the yeah. complex nature of it and the hassle with all the paperwork. So you may find that when you say like, yeah, I want you to come out and pump my tank and inspect it and you have to send something into the SEO, you may find that your, your pumper goes, you know, I, I really don't want to do that. But, but on the insurance end, I have a hard time doing that because the way to, to handle and show, uh, pumping it out, I bet you 95% of them people have liability. Oh, oh I, I'm pretty sure if they're a company right. that's operating, they have insurance, but they have to give us a proof of insurance. Like if they're going to be doing this in that capacity. Well, then when you go back through and check them out and say, they, you would find that then. Well, it's, it's not so much like checking or research. <clears throat> what I'm saying is in order to make this kosher, you really have two, two areas that you can be in. You can either have the SEO do it, which is the current method that we have. Or if you have private pumpers do it, there's a, a list of things that they have to do in order for it to be proper and valid. One of them is providing the municipality proof of insurance, amongst some other things. So it's, it's again, just to reiterate this, this is not quite as cut and dry as just, I'm going to have a guy come out and pump my tank and look at it and give me a, a passing grade on an inspection. There's more to it that has to happen. Well, I'll say one more thing and then I'll be quiet. Uh, you know, this is typical government. You have one thing to get done and it takes three people to enforce it. And that's what's driving this town. Well, it's, it's not just this town. And just for, for the sake of reiteration, this is not something I agree with the premise of inspections. It's the same thing. I'll use the car as a good analogy. You want to make sure that everybody else is being safe. Most people, they're going to do the right thing. Yeah, However, you don't have to go to three people to get it inspected. Well, technically it would be two, but, um, you still have to kind of go through the motions. And this is something that we're, we're as much, I'll say victim to as everybody else. I know I'm going to have to do the same thing that you're going to have to do with your septic system. Uh, Irene's going to have to do the same. I think Jim's kind of the odd man out because he has sewer because he's in Stonecroft, but um, we're all going to have to do these same things. And I've tried to personally look at it uh, when I, when I went through all this stuff under the lens of how would I feel as a, as a homeowner, as a constituent. And other than maybe shaving a little bit of cost off, there's really not much of a benefit to having your individual pumper do it. And like I said before, you may find that the pumper you go to or pumpers you try to go to may say, we'll pump it out, but we're not going to do the inspection because of the paperwork that has to go into it. Like there, there may be places that are You're just, assuming that. Uh, it's, it's, it's an assumption. I'll give you that. It's an assumption, but we either have to lock in one way or the other, the way the ordinance was written many years ago, and it did not get changed when it got adopted is the SEO does the inspections. And just as a, a personal commentary, I'm in favor of that because 
you could have a situation where people just write pass and they line through it. They don't actually do the inspection. It's essentially a rubber stamp. And it's good to have an impartial, non-invested third party, the, in this case, the so, SEO. So if I go you the guy you have here, and, mm -hmm. he, and he has an engineer like that, he fails me, mm -hmm. and I call another guy that's independent and he passes me, who's legal? The SEO, technically. Well, if he's an SEO, I can get another SEO. He's not our SEO. Well, it doesn't matter if he has the same license as the other. It does. We it appoint does the matter. SEO at the beginning of the year. It absolutely so does matter. I got stuff going on here, a cop out of another ordinance and said, wait, like, you can't find me because he's, he's back in that well, time. You, you really, you wouldn't be able to get pulled over on Main Street by a, by a missing cop. That's the jurisdictional difference oh, okay. between why I'm missing and, state and state well, that's because right. that's state, think, think of, think of DEP as the state cops, the state cops can enforce. And right now the state cops are telling the local cops, you need to do something. Well, I personally think it's overreaching. Um, uh, under, understood. Um, anything? No one ever stands up to it. The DEP and everything. But Cage, 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 they're just going to compile because they get away. Well, Cage so, so, did stand up to DEP and they got nowhere. Cage no. did stand up to DEP. I mean, got it's nowhere. Going to get a back, what? It part it's going to part get of it. A back. It's gonna. So, it's gonna. Yeah. So so Mervin, it, there's no guarantees help. to anything in life. Right. Let me just let me throw that out there first and foremost. But one of the things there's two things that really the DEP is predominantly focus focusing on us. The on-lot management ordinance, which we're one of the last places in the state, I think, that has adopted that, uh, and the inspections therein, and then the whole sewer issue. Those are the two things. One of the things that we're hoping to get out of the on-lot management ordinance and the whole pump out and inspection, things like that, is to start getting a very clear picture of what the systems like look like in the township. Not even just Main Street, but just overall, what kind of condition are they in? Because I know a lot of places, you you might have been diligent about pumping things out. I get mine pumped out every three or four years or so. Not everybody has been that way. From talking to Gary, who was the previous SEO, he's like, there's systems that have just been like covered over. There's dirt on them and no one has pumped them out or looked at them in decades. We need to get a clear picture of what we have, what kind of condition we have, because then we can we can do two things. We can start to fix any underlying problems that we have. And we can paint a clear picture for the, the Act 537 sewer component of, hey, constituents, it turns out we probably actually do need this because everybody's systems are in really bad shape and it's going to cost X number of dollars roughly to fix them. Or on the opposite side of that, hey, DEP, we're finding that our systems are actually in really good shape, who, who'd have thought, and it's not going to be cost effective. And that gives us the ability to have uh, dialogue possibly with a lawyer about what we can do to try to stop that like five or $6 million project. So like I said, just to circle back, two big things that DEP is after is the on-lot management ordinance and the inspections and the sewer. By doing one, which is the easier of the two, or the, honestly, the quicker of the two, we get a little bit of the heat off of us. And we satisfy the legal requirement to actually do that. This is not just us like trying to divert attention or anything like that. This is a, we have to do this one of these things is a huge project. The other one's a comparatively smaller project, which is why that's getting done faster. So if someone, if someone in the Northeast and where we got started first, mm -hmm. if they come Thursday in January, are they grandfathered three years? There is a stipulation in the ordinance that if you can provide a proof, like a bill that you had your system pumped, you are exempt from the first round of inspection so that you would go to the next cycle. So let's say you pumped yours in, I don't know, December, and you had a, a receipt from a pumping company, you could file that with the township under that part of the ordinance and you would be put into the next cycle. We don't want- But you don't have the computer to track it. No, we have, we to, have, send we have to send to everything to the SEO. This is what Alan's doing yeah. for us. Yeah, and, and if I yeah. can, if, again, I, I, yeah. like, I like analogies, so I'll give yeah. you this. We don't have the computer system to do this stuff. It's no different than the income tax stuff. The, the county, does all the taxes and stuff like that. We we ultimately receive the funds. We're not the ones keeping the, the list of that, of who has paid, who hasn't paid. We're not sending out the bills. We're not doing any of that. We're sending it out to somebody who is specialized in this. This is what they do. It's no different than what we're doing with the SEO right now. So the property would have an outhouse going on. That's, that's not going to pass. They would have to 
remediate in some capacity. Does not yeah, outhouses. they don't allow outhouses, cesspools, wildcat sewers. There's a there's a list of things that are that? strictly. And that's that's going to be the next problem. Yeah. In, in, in a few months, you're going to have people coming to this meeting saying, you know, we've never had a problem with our system. And all of a sudden you're telling us that we can't use this outhouse anymore. We have to spend thirty thousand dollars to put it. Yeah. As, a septic system and they're going to be very very upset yeah and unfortunately i think there's going to be more of those than we're that we're aware of yeah because i've been told that there are people pumping into what used to be an old outhouse that used to be their outhouse mm -hmm. and i and i understand it's not just one or two so yeah. we're liable to have dozens of people here in a few months when, saying i can't when, believe i have to do this when uh when is uh stop for cell phone 2023 so the first one is 22 23 the second yeah. one is 23 24 the third one is 24 25 yeah so it'd be 24 two years two year, technically two years from now would be the start for that any any time technically any time during that window or even before then if somebody on main street like kelly if you wanted to get your system pumped out and inspected you could do that today if you really wanted to and you would just be you'd be good it would put you on the cycle they would track you in their computer system is okay they're good for four years we'll circle back in four years and make sure that they they do it again in fact yep. even if we put sewer a sewer system in through town mm -hmm. all the farmers would still have to have pump it's yeah it doesn't matter I mean, the, 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 two, the two are part of act 537 but they're not they're not related right it's, so we have five over a little over 500 septic systems in the township there are 180 homes in the town right there's of right. those 180 there's 165 edus that we're in and that includes some of the stuff on 422 yeah. so let's call it like just for the sake of easy math like 100 homes just for rounding down yeah. you'd still have 400 homes in the township that are subject to on lot management and, right. and inspections so we could spend six or seven million dollars for those hundred and yeah, still have a problem that's basically that's basically yeah. and yeah. that's where the dep is a pain in the butt you know, they're just telling us this is how you have to do it they don't tell you they don't they don't care what it costs Yep. And that, that's and that's, more, yeah, Robeson yeah. Township was a, a good example of that. They didn't care. Mm -hmm. they, they said, you need to put it in and that's it. Yeah. And unfortunately, uh, Robeson is kind of in a similar state to what we are now. They put in a plan decades ago that yep. said they were putting in a public store. And this is why when the other two members of the board were on here that I was asking for changes to it is once you put that in and once they approve it the clock starts ticking you are legally obligated to meet the approved plan requirements and what happened with robinson is they put that in they said yeah we'll do public sewer and they found themselves in a similar state oh we can't afford it we can't afford it we can't afford it and they kicked it down the line for decades yep. and at some point the dep said look you're going to do it or we're going to do it and it got ugly <laughs> which i think every single one of us wants to avoid the yeah. ugliness on yeah. that I mean, despite who's sitting up here, it's still the same problem. And this problem has just been kicked forward and kicked forward and kicked forward. Trust me, I was not, in, I'm still not in favor of the sewer. As, as far as Peter knows, he's not in favor of the sewer. Jim is unaffected by it. And, oh and none of us wanted to see this happen because we know there's a cost. Yeah. But at the same time- yeah, But the source is state law. Right. The sewer is a state law. Right, right. So, but none of us were in favor of it. And, and we all tried to do our best to, to put a halt to it. But it went through and it went through before mm -hmm. I came on the board. I went through before Jim came on the board and there's only so much we can do, but we have to be compliant. We, we're not the enemy. We're, we're, we're the same people sitting next to you up there. We're just on this side of the desk for, for the moment. But at the same time, we are trying to ask all the questions we can ask and do everything that we can do. We ask that question. Well, how would you like to be in my shoes? I've just spent $15,000 on a sewer system three years ago, and now I gotta get inspected, but it'll probably last the next 20 years because it's new. That's what I don't That's right, that's right. But your septic system needs to be pumped every few years and it needs yeah, to be inspected. Yeah. Right, and, right. And, and whether well, whether it's brand new, you can have things and I I will I'll use uh, just a, an easy approachable thing. Sometimes you'll buy something from the store, brand new, it'll work for a couple of months and it might break. Things happen, and that's right. the purpose of the inspection. Yeah, well, an inspector come out on the one like that. No, but it, it's something that's buried in the ground. You have right. no way of knowing that it's working or not working, other than if somebody actually yeah, takes a look yeah. at it. Oh. Well, I mean, there's there's yeah. different types of failure. Right. There's catastrophic failure where you'd have something back up, sure, but you have to have it looked at periodically to make sure that it's it's well, working. Inspector right. looking at it ain't going to see the catastrophic things that go wrong. 
Well, there's there's if a, he is, he's pretty good. I mean, I, I would love to pay that guy a lot of money to tell him the mistakes. <laughs> <laughs> um, I, I had but, a septic system go on me two years after it was installed. Brand new system, two years. It happens. Right. And I had to pay for the cleanup. I had to pay for everything. So yeah. But you didn't take an inspector to tell you that. No, it happened, but it just happened, and there was no way at two years it wouldn't have been pumped. It would have been pumped at three years. Something like that happens. No, right. there's not a liability right. aspect of this, but well, what I'm so what I'm is in a way. Uh, you as the owner of the property are technically liable, but um, what I'm trying to illustrate here is one: we are under a requirement to do this. Two you really probably should have it checked periodically. And I know most people probably don't do this. I know any of the times that I've gotten mine pumped out, I haven't had it inspected because it wasn't a requirement, let alone having the SEO look at it. Thirdly, even if you have a brand new system that was put in, you could have a situation where, let's say it's a concrete tank. It develops a crack in it. You could be leaching in and you're not going to see that. The pumper's not going to look for that. But when the tank is empty, the SEO, when he's looking around, checking the baffles, checking the tank, he may see it. And you may know, okay, I have a problem that I have to deal with and I'm not leaching sewage into groundwater. How do I know that inspector isn't telling me to do things that, that's wrong of his pounds? You have to take that with the assumption that if he's a registered inspector, like it's no different than taking your car to a mechanic. And this is something that if we receive a lot of complaints, that's something we would look at. We're not experts in, in sewage, but yeah, but it, it would be something that would be cause for alarm for sure. If a bunch of people come in and say like, hey, the inspector came out and said, my, my system shot. I just had this put in a year ago. There's no way it's bad. We're not going to take that lightly. Please understand that. There's a lot of systems that are, are not brand new. They're very far from it. And we would not have brought Alan on yep. if we did not think that he was a proper, professional, conscionable person. Uh, and would not be doing things like telling people stuff is broken when it's not. So from the farming, we, 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 we deal with the DEP and they don't have the staff to get around. The only way we get DEPs in there, if you call them, make a complaint. Yeah, they only come out to investigate other than they keep track of this kind of stuff on the municipal side of things of, do you have this program? Are you doing it? How much has been done? How so many people are complying or not out, I can take the chance and he comes out and says, you're here to do that. And I have the paperwork at home that might say, no. No. what happens if he says it's okay? He's not one. He's not going to inspect it. That's not the way bureaucracy works within government. Well, what, um, I'm not going to find you. It has to be filed with the state. There's special paperwork that the SEO has to file with the state every single yeah. year. But and if I go to court and it's not worth it, but I'm just, I'm yeah, just yeah, coming yeah, back. Yeah. If I go to court and I've got a judge and everything on my property's up to space. I, well, I'm not a lawyer. What's your legal advantage on that? I'm not a lawyer, but you're technically not compliant with the ordinance. And from a law standpoint, if the ordinance says that the SEO has to inspect it once every four years and you say, I didn't do that, I had somebody else inspect it. In terms of the law, you did not follow the ordinance. You were in violation of that ordinance, and right. you didn't. Well, right. Bumper has the same license as Does, the SOS. Doesn't matter. Yeah, and, right. and, 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 that's and, no, is. and you have to remember, it's not just you. There's over 400 properties that need to have this happen. If every single person would come to us and say, "Hey, again, it's still a paperwork problem for us. Everyone has to have this paperwork filed. The report has to be submitted to the DEP." This is where we're at. It's a management issue for us as well. It's not just compliance. It's, it's a paper management. It's a data management issue. I bet you 75% are going to get them pumped and don't even know they have something to do with it. Say that, say that again? Well, they got a letter. They got a letter. They got yeah. a letter. How much gets thrown in the mail now? Well, they got, they got a letter from us, and they're going to be getting at least yeah. uh, two. I think Alan said he was going to yeah. do like two letters. Well, he sends one out at the beginning yeah. of each cycle. cycle. Right. And then it, or as and a then reminder. And I think he's sending one like halfway. Yeah. So, so bare, bare, bare minimum. Right. 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 But lack of knowledge of the law is not a defense. If you I didn't know, lack, right. But I said yeah. lack. If you didn't know about it and you were told about it and those letters were sent, it's documented in the meetings. Yeah. It's documented in, in Alan's system. We have proof that those letters were sent. If you want to ignore it, that's up to you. You still have to comply with the law. That's it. Yeah. And I'd also like to point out one thing just to reiterate. There are still costs that happen in the background. So even if we said, okay, we're going to change the ordinance where pumpers can do it. 
you're still going to see by my rough math, probably at least a $25 charge on the tax yep. bill to offset. So this. did you come in because it's government and he's inspector for the township and did you put that out on bid? He's the or SEO. The so we, we- He's the SEO, what happens there's other people out? We, every year we you appoint, appoint an SEO. and we look at the kind of service that we would get, the kind of costs, and we, we appoint accordingly. Professional services yeah. don't need to be bid at it. Yeah, and yeah. We, we didn't have that many bites, to be honest. I think there was like we two had people. Three, I think it was like three total. Yeah, we did. We called like five or six people. And Alan was the only one that responded and said, yes, I'd like to do that. It, it, it's not it's what you think. Money for him and I don't care. I think it's That's fine. That's fine. I think he would beg to differ if he knew the volume of work that he had to do. So no, he's, he's it, a salesman. Here, no, he's not. not. He's, he's not. a salesman. You know, it's it's easy to say that about anyone's job when you don't know what it's like to be in their shoes. Nice. I've had people say that to me about my job, and it's not. It's a liability. He's under the microscope also with the DEP. I realize half of your work for supervisors is the kind of job I do realize that. To say that I don't, but I don't. Well, by saying that, that's sort of a, a, by proxy, thank you. So thank you. Yeah. Um, and, 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 and we appreciate your opinion and input. Yeah. This is what these meetings are for. And, and sometimes it's tough for us too, because we know, and we feel it. And like I said, it doesn't matter who's sitting up here at this desk. It's all the same problem. And it's just, the buck has been passed again and again and again. And now we're the ones that have to deal with it. And you, and I feel like people have like a personal thing against me. It's not, but it shouldn't be that. This is what we have to deal with. And we're trying to figure out the best solution to this problem that has been passed along and passed along and passed along. I appreciate your kindness and I appreciate your your um, civility and having a discussion today. I truly do. And, and thank you for being here. Yeah, I, I, one last thing to add. For what it's worth, I'm with you. I don't like spending money either. Whether it's 50 bucks, 25 bucks, doesn't matter. I'm not keen on spending money either. And I'm, I'm gonna be affected by this too until whatever time that the public sewer goes in. If there was a better way or a cheaper way to do this and still check all the boxes effectively, I'm all for it. I wanna be on the record and saying that I'm all for it. But looking at the two scenarios that we're in, either having the SEO do it or having the, the you be, basically you being able to pick your own bumper, of the two, the SEO is the, the least painful route, both from a cost and a complexity standpoint. If that changes, we can change the ordinance. We just simply have to review it, rewrite it, and re-advertise yeah, it. You it's, can change the ordinance. You can change the fee amount. Yeah. yeah. If we find that we so got an excess amount of your, money. We should cut the state legislator people to do that. No, 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 no. So the Act 537 says what you have to do. Some of the specifics are, are up to us to implement by ordinance. And, and I'll use the, the inspection component. You have to have it inspected. And it has to be by somebody who's certified, et cetera. We have the authority to say the SEO does it, kind of like what we do with the building codes. If you want something done, craft has to inspect it because there are building codes. We can either have the SEO do it, or we can allow people to have the public, uh, the uh, private hauler, the pumpers inspection people to do it. Right now, the ordinance is written the one way. We can change that. That's at our discretion to do. We just need to make sure that when we change it, it's the right thing. Because the last thing we want to do is change it so like, oh, you saved a couple of bucks up front, only to find that it actually ends up costing, you save $5 and it costs 10. We don't want to see that happen. Um, I lost, lost the second train of thought there. Oh, uh, yes. One of the other things that we may find in time is that fee may go down in time. There have been other municipalities that have done this in the past and they started out at X amount and they realized, okay, at the end of the year, we have a little bit of a, a surplus. Same thing with the streetlight tax that we do. We found that, okay, it didn't actually cost the whole amount. And they adjust it. Could be five dollars, could be ten dollars. I believe the one place Alan said about was they went from like fifty dollars down to like thirty dollars. They, they went from seventy-five to sixty-five. Thank you. That's what it was. Seventy-five to sixty-five. So you could see changes. Um, yeah, go ahead. Inflation's going right now. Most things don't. I don't think you can't be a bet that it's going to go down. Most things don't go down. I'll agree with that. But you could have a situation where, especially in the first year, the first year of us doing this, we may find okay. We set it slightly high. It's going to be forty-five dollars next year rather than fifty. That's certainly possible. Um, I wouldn't say budget for that necessarily. I always assume right. worst case scenario. Well, I'm but I'm going to be able to keep track of that yeah. because Alan provides us detailed bills, and we'll at the end of the year or even by you know midpoint, we'll be able to know how much. Yeah. And and he could probably give us an idea how many people pumped out, so we could get a relative estimate 
over how many how much it's costing us. Yeah, and when we go to so, balance the budget, yeah, I think I think he's going to give us those reports. Yeah, he's, yeah, yeah, he, he will. Yeah, yeah. he will. Yeah, yeah, he will. Mm -hmm. But I can keep track of that fee in our system as well. Yeah, so, and, and when we go to balance the budget, like I said, we we intentionally try not to have a surplus of things. We obviously want to have enough money to to operate, but if we have things, and I'll use the street lights as a good example again, if we have an accumulation beyond what is needed we will undercut that to make sure that it stays at the right amount. Like that's, that's a thing that we do annually. I have done that so far three years now, and we've been pretty good in that respect. And this is unfortunately the growing pains of having to do something new. We may see changes, we may see adjustments, we may see alterations, but right now the way the ordinance is written is the SEO has to do that inspection. There's a, a, an initial cycle for everybody to kind of get started on that. And then it's anywhere between four and seven and a half years, depending on the, the, the life or the state of your system between this pump out and the next one. Okay. I, I can, I, 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 I'll, I'll, I'll agree to that point, Mervyn. Thank you. Thank you. So, uh, so next item on the agenda is to uh, ratify the, uh, pump out inspection levy that is placed on the spring tax bills. A motion is needed to approve resolution 2022-3. I'll make a motion to approve that. Second. Roll call, Peter. Aye. Irene. Aye. Jim. Reluctantly, aye. It could be adjusted. Right. We're, and that's what we're trying to figure out. It's training wheels. We're all trying to figure this out. Okay. Next is to appoint the delinquent septic pump out inspection levy collector. Uh, we currently use statewide tax recovery for our other delinquent taxes like per capita. Uh, Arcadia Recovery Bureau is used by Coomer Township and Birdsboro. I'd, I'd say let's stick with statewide for the sake of simplicity. I mean, if you want me to call around, we still have a little bit of time to do that. But, um, just yeah, have them do both. I'd rather just have statewide do because then they yeah. issue us one, one check and okay, yeah, it's, it's, it's just simpler. easier. So do you want to make a motion I'll, I'll make a motion. I'll make a motion. It's, it's housekeeping. Appoint, I'd like to make a motion to appoint delinquent uh, septic pump out inspection levy collector as statewide tax recovery for 2022. Second. Roll call, Peter. Aye. Irene. Aye. Jim. Aye. Okay, next is the CoStars Road Salt contract renewal. The enrollment deadline is March 15th for the 2022-2023 season. Last year, we renewed for 200 ton. This would mean we would have to take a minimum of 60% or a maximum of 140% for 200 tons, 120 tons being the min, 180 tons being the max. Um, so far this year, we got... Uh, we got... Uh, we got uh, four loads or five four. loads? Four loads. Four loads so far, uh, in the city designer, we have to get one more load. And this whole thing is full. Okay. But if we get another snowstorm, I can get that one load. Okay. So we'll, we'll end up with a, uh, okay. I don't think we need 200 pounds the next year. Okay. If you want to put down the. Do you think like 180? 150. That's 60%. Well, you have to take a 60% minimum would be 120 ton, divide that by 25. Well, if we did, if we did 150, 60% of that would be 90 tons, which we'd well, be able to do. Even so, if we push down to 100 tons, you would still have to make do with If we have to buy extra during the year, it isn't that much more. It's, no, it's not, but it, it's always cheaper on CoStars. Yeah, yeah. It's, it's cheaper by a little bit. It's not a huge difference, but it is there. Um, yeah, if we did 100 tons, that would be 60 tons minimum and uh, 140 tons max. Okay, but then keep in mind, what if we have a lot it's, of snow next year? Yeah. Uh, it's, like, this is it's, the... It's a gamble. So if we go into the season with a full salt shed, which roughly how much how much tonnage is in the salt shed if it's full? Like, well, they said it can hold 75 ton, but I think it holds more than that. Yeah. Like, uh, I was going to say like 100. Six, six or seven uh, rides. Okay. Uh, okay. Well, let's for the for the sake of math, let's call it 100 tons. So, but let me say, so we only have to take one more load. Yeah. Yeah. 
which will fit in there. I mean, if you get another, if I have to go out one more this, this year, yeah. So right now will not fit. Will fit if we have another snowstorm. No, we don't need a real snowstorm. Well, just anything with ice. Yeah, yeah. inclement weather. But if we go into the next season with, let's say, 100 tons, just again, for the, the sake of easy math, if we go into this with 100 tons, and if we, we order through CoStars for another 100, we would be obligated for 60, which would give us 160 tons of, of working salt we, for the or season. We could take or we could take 140, which would give us right. 240, which, unless we have a really oh, bad, bad season, it's probably... A, 240 is probably a sufficient amount of salt to get us through the year. Do we have the space? Right now, no. So then what? Well, the, the thing about this is we have to we have to kind of structure yeah. this on trying to go into the season full yeah. and then order to, to replace kind of like first yeah. in first out um i i say go over the, so what's the do the math what's not that'd be 60%. 90 60 percent that'd be 90. which i mean that's which is that's workable by the way 25 how many lines uh it's three and a half ish four, not like four. yeah Supposed to get snow today. Are we? Yeah. yeah. Oh. <laughs> All right. So, I mean, 150 would work. 150. If we don't have oh, any snow, it, we obviously because you don't want to. You don't want to undercut yourself short, but then you don't want to take too much because we don't have we, a place to store. Yeah, we'd have to ask Papa Hawk to store it again, which was oh. very nice of them that they did that. But I don't yeah. want to so, abuse okay. that favor too much. Exactly. All right. So we you guys decided we talked about the uh, salt storage shed. Yeah. Is that something That's... we can feasibly do on this property? Uh, yeah. We we could make it work, but it would be probably more money than we'd want to throw yeah. at it, considering some of the other things that we're doing. Yeah, some samples out back too. Yeah. Yeah. Um, okay. Okay. So I'm I'm not opposed to the 150. I think as a like a low end, we can work with 90 as a bare minimum um roadmasters in agreement with that jim irene you think that's okay yeah i'm leaving all that sort of stuff <laughs> to okay. you. I just um, I'll, I'll make a motion yeah. to renew the co-stars road salt uh, agreement for 150 tons second roll call peter hi irene hi jim hi hey Next item on the agenda is the trash and recycling contracts. At last month's meeting, we authorized the trash contract to be put out on PenBid. Um, this actually was put out in the normal uh, advertising method through the paper for bids uh, because of some speed related things with uh, getting it up on PenBid. Uh, we will be receiving bids until 4 p.m. on Monday, March 7th, and they will be opened uh, on Tuesday, March 8th. Bids will be discussed and possibly awarded at a special meeting that will be held in, here in the township building on Wednesday, March 9th at 6 p.m. This is a, a potential to replace the current trash and recycling company that we have, Eagle. Uh, we've gotten a lot of complaints around that and we're, we're researching what our other options are within the marketplace and seeing if it'd be a good idea to switch providers. So more to come on that, but uh, for right now, that's out. Depending on that, we'll either have to renew with Eagle, which we still have two years on the contract that we can renew for, or we'll switch to a different service. Okay, uh, speaking of this special meeting, we will need a motion to advertise this meeting um, and specifically discuss and possibly award a bid for curbside collection and disposal of residential municipal solid waste and recyclables. Uh, so I will make a motion to advertise the special meeting for the purposes of uh, reviewing bids for curbside collection and disposal of residential municipal solid waste and recyclable materials for Wednesday, March 9th, 2022 at 6 p.m. in the Township Building. Second. Roll call, Peter. Aye. Irene. Aye. Jim. Aye. Okay. 
Next up on the agenda is the American Rescue Plan Act. Uh, I'll say my initial introduction and I'll actually turn it over to Irene and Sue who have had more of a finger on the pulse of this. Uh, we received so far $100,848.79 for the American Rescue Plan Act. The final rules have been issued by the US Treasury Department. According to PSATS and CELG, any municipality receiving less than 10 million can report the money as lost revenue and by doing so would put this into their general fund and can be used for just about anything. Uh, CELG also suggested spending uh, the total on one large project because it would simplify reporting. The first report of money spent out of the ARP is due April 30th, 2022. Uh, if we haven't spent anything, that's going to be a very, very simple report. So, there it is. Honestly, there's really not much more. Mm -hmm. Um, to report, we're kind of, I know some people have been asking, well, why don't we do this with money? Why don't we do that with the money? We're just going to hold on to it so we could have one solid plan with it. Um, one concept I think we all had was, do we repair this building, which would include updating the park, or do we build a new building? We're, I'm still working on numbers. You had someone call about the elevator already? Yes. I didn't understand that email. So it's just that the, the product is, is... So to put an elevator in, excluding the construction actual... of the actual shaft. Okay. Would be $90,000. Okay. So the construction so of the so shaft... would be plus right. building the shaft. So yeah. we'd actually have to contact an architect yes, he said to give us... Yes. Wow. Yeah. Yes. Wow. It's, it's expensive. And that costs. Yes. It's yep. expensive. Mm -hmm. Okay. So we have, we have one number that we could put mm -hmm. together with. And so... As I'm collecting the numbers, I'm going to pass along to you. We can have everything displayed on here. The reason why we would have to put an elevator in this building, if we're going to open up the upstairs rooms for public use, it's because it has to be ADA compliant. Yeah. So people are like, why put an elevator in? Because we have to be ADA compliant. I know some people had interest in having the history room open mm -hmm. to the public. That would be a wonderful thing to have again. We want, if we're going to update this building, again, we're going to do it right. We're not going to just piecemeal it together. Having some of the ARP funds would make it a little bit easier. It should be a matching fund of a similar amount, a little over $100,000, which would give us about $200,000 to work with. So the thought process is let's gather the data. Let's look at all of our numbers. Do we want to repair and update this building, which would include updating the park, or do we want to consider building a new facility? Having said that, there may be some grants available if we're able to build a new facility, which would enable us to cover the cost all depending on our income study. And that might be something that's even more feasible than updating this particular building. Nothing is happening right now. We're gathering the data. We're going to take a good hard look at everything before we make a decision and, and move forward with this. So as far as the ARP funds, Nothing's happening right now, but if we have the need, they could certainly go towards culvert repair, mm -hmm. which I'm actually in favor of. You know, we got to get things fixed. But yeah. um, as as things go and move along, we can let the money sit in the account and see what we actually need it for before making the knee jerk response and just spending it on willy nilly. Mm -hmm. I'm I'm not that person. Yeah. We have so, to have a plan by the end of 2024, and we have until the end of 2026 to spend it. And yeah, if we don't yeah. spend it by the end of 26, we got to give it back. No. Yeah, we yeah. will. We, one way or the other, we'll spend it before yeah. the end of 2026. Yeah. But um, we want to make sure that we're going to use it for the right things, like Irene said. Yeah, and yeah. As much as I know there's a historical significance in the building, and just, just for everybody's know, when we talk about getting a new facility, we're not talking about bulldozing this building. We're talking about breaking ground elsewhere building, in the township yeah. and building new. Um, it's a very nice building. It has a lot of historical significance, but for what we're trying to use it for, it, it's very much square peg round hole where yeah. we're fitting bits and pieces in where we'd much better uh, use uh, a, a different space. For example, like the community association, if we had a space that had a, a very large meeting room or a meeting room that we could open into two rooms, like I was saying about you could do things like have craft shows or bingo nights or rent it out for wedding receptions or whatever. You could have it for an right. evacuation space if there was a tornado or a right. flood or whatever. It's a lot of things that we can't do here. It's other simple example is like with the, the trucks. That, that back room there used to be classrooms and it was modified kind of haphazardly at some point. The wall is starting to pitch out or has been pitching out. Um, we don't have a lot of space to actually do a lot of maintenance on the trucks. We don't have a, a real good dedicated space for the tools. Jim, you saw that firsthand when we went to that other municipality. Their garage was very nice, and it was because it was actually built 
as a garage. Yeah. It was not something that was. And most of these municipal yeah. buildings are on one floor, so they yeah. don't have to spend don't 90 have, or, yeah. well, it'd be more than 90. Yeah. Probably, yeah. 150, probably 150,000 is what I figured. For an elevator. Yeah. Yeah. So, you know, based on that new information, I really don't think that we need to keep getting bids on this building. I think it's time that we start talking about looking for space well, and building. I, 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 I want us to do the yeah. due diligence. I, I, I want us to I, do I, the due diligence. Right. I see due diligence will take us another two years. No, and no, then this so. place is this so. place is going to fall down. Yeah. yeah. The, the walls right. pitching out. Right. The windows are, are not right. efficient. We're spending a ton right. of money to heat this smaller space. We, we, can, we can do the, the two in tandem. Right. At some right. point, at some point, and what I think is going to happen here is we're going to look at this and go, okay, it's going to cost us five hundred thousand dollars to get a property build something and basically new space 500k we're going to get to a point where we go okay elevator windows this 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 and we've already hit that number and we still have other things on the list yeah. I, I don't think we're going to have to go through the full exercise but right. we should still go oh, yeah. through it to be able so to that it's there for documentation so yeah. in 20 years from now my kids don't look at me and say hey mom why did you waste this money I could say, but no, we didn't waste this money. This is what we did. Yeah. But um, so, so then on that note, then Jim, would you like to come with me? And I, and I know Butch has volunteered to come with me too. Let's start going to some places and have plans drawn up and some price ideas. Okay. They want kind of a rough cut. I, I have something. Right? I'll send it out. Yeah. It's in a, it's in a like a spiral bound notebook at home. That but I kind of, I drew it out in pieces of like these are the things. I don't know how exactly they fit together, but this right. is what I, what I'd like to see. I want to see an office space that has this sort of layout and has a, a file room connected right. to that. I want to see a, a meeting room that can be bisected and is a minimum of these right. kind of measurements. Right. That if we take that to somebody who is a builder, they can say, yeah, we can give you a pole barn or a right. pole building or whatever that we can fit these in and it'll be, it'll be fine. Right. That's right. The, the other point is, is even it's the entry point. This is not a safe entry point when myself and Sue are in this office. Okay. Anyone can come in. There is no route out for myself or suit if there was someone that wanted to do violence, whatever. And to me, that's a huge safety issue. The other part I thought about in a new building, you could have the public come in and I could say like when my children were younger and using the park, there's no place, there's very few parks in this area where there's a bathroom available. If that building is open to the public, they could access the bathroom when they need to during you know hours that the building is open. That's a wonderful thing. But the other part is, we saw what happened during the shutdown. If people could still access the building, access a window where the secretary could take information, they're still separate from that public, we're gonna keep the ball rolling. We wanna anticipate the needs of, of how we may be impacted in the future. We wanna make it a safer Great. space. I can tell you, I know at one prior meeting, at one of the meetings that I wasn't here for, um, Sue and I have been talking about um, this space is Carol. not, yeah, this space is not sufficient anymore. What what we need in this particular office, it just doesn't work. There's there's Sue needs the file cabinets in here. I'm willing to take the back desk and put it in in the AA room. And all that would, would require is moving the computer over there. I would need my own printer, but put, and putting another lock on the door just so Sue can have the filing space that she needs. I mean, just the back and forth between the file room, the back and forth between what was I going in there for? It just again, it's we're it, using yeah. we're using a space and it, it's functional. Right, it's, it gets it, it gets work, to spy, right? but it's not right. really well suited for no, things. And not going anymore. back, going back to that whole thing with the pump outs and things, there are so many things that are required as part of this the the paper trail, the red tape of government that we have to do, and it gets more complicated and complex every day. Yeah. So we're, we're hitting a point where we have so much stuff and not the right space to be able to store it, file it, catalog it. And we need to change something, whether it's changing how we're using this building, renovating it, whatever, or building something else. We, we've hit a, a point where our, our use is different enough that we have to change. Yeah, yeah. So why don't we get a realtor in here to tell us what this building's worth, what they think they could sell it for, and that'll help us make a decision as well. Okay. Do you know anybody? Do you have any good contacts? If not, I have. Well, I know one person. Who's the one guy that stopped in here one time? And... Yeah. Well, I said I have. I have yeah. one person I could put a line yeah, out to, well, but I don't know a lot of people in the real estate industry. I don't know if you have to use a commercial realtor or not. It's probably so. good. Mm. I don't know. But if you make a call, yeah. we'll find out. Uh, in the scenario you're talking about uh, selling this building, is the playground go with it? Um, Technically, uh, my, under my understanding of the deed restriction is if the building changes hands ownership-wise, 
it would actually revert back to Conrad Weiser School District. No, I think it actually says in the D that the playground has to stay with the building. Yeah. Oh, okay. I'm yeah. pretty sure that's okay. what it says. I, I misread that then. Oh, I yeah. thought you, I thought yeah. you had told me that. Yeah, I thought it was, back. I thought the deed restriction was. My feeling was if it reverted back to the but school district, says, they'd give it back to us real quick because they don't want to maintain it either. Yeah. Yeah. It also yeah. says that it reverts. If we want to sell it, it, it goes back to Conrad Weiser School District. Okay. So we, we'd have to, we, the bottom line is we'd have to talk to Andy, but one of the things that we are looking at is when we say the new building, we're not just talking about just new building. We're talking about playground. playground. We want to get a sufficient amount of land to be able to say, okay, we're going to put a brand new baseball field in. We're going to put a soccer field in. We're going to put tennis courts in. We're going to put a walking path in. You're big dreams. I, I am. Yeah, yeah. But it especially be, if we can get grants, yeah. especially if we can get grants, yeah. the goal here is to basically take what we're doing yeah. here and put it into a, a better space, a better equipped space yeah. holistically over there. Yeah. If you wanna look at some other grants, and this is one I came across and I sent them in an email, USDA has a grant, I can't remember the name of it. If you look onto the USDA grants, there was one grant that if it is built as a community center, which is what our focus was from the beginning, as well as an evacuation point, which talking to the EMC and a couple of other local EMCs, there's no evacuation point on this end of the county. And I'm sure if there was an incident within Lebanon County, if we were the closest evacuation center, people would be coming from, uh, from Lebanon County to, to here. We've already had a couple instances in town where we saw, again, how the building just did not function for the needs it, that, that it, it, it should have. Mm -hmm. And so focusing on those two points, and we would have to pay someone to do professional grant writing for us, that can enable us as much as 70% of the cost of a building. And so 70% of the cost of a building would allow funds to be freed up uh, for a lot of things. So if you wanna look at the USDA website and look up grants on there, it's very, very interesting. And, and certainly grants can be combined. So the DCNR grant, mm -hmm. whatever and however we could find funding to make this as at least expensive as possible, that's what we're gonna look into. And every intention is to take the park with us yeah. or create a new park. So it, it, it's gonna be, if we move, if we do something different, it'll be the Marion Township Community Center. Yeah. That's what we're focusing on. Yeah, nothing, nothing is set in stone. This is no. something that we're just, high level looking at yeah. to make sure that if we're gonna spend, let's say $50,000 a year minimum to do upkeep on the building, just ballpark number, and we know that we have a bunch of big projects that the windows are gonna cost us a, ha a quarter million dollars at least. There's this, there's this, there's this. Is it gonna be better to do that and then still have some of the aches and pains that we have here with, okay, the file room isn't big enough. We have to cart things up and down the stairs. And, um, or is it better to take everything and then put it in a, a new place and have it be designed the way that it, it should be to, to meet the needs? I think um, you just answered that question. Yeah, I, I think I did <laughs> yeah. too. But the, going, going this, back to the, the area of our playground, is it any bigger than what you see? No. So that it's pretty much it's yeah. it's what you see. There's not enough to. room over there to build a building. No. 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 no, no. And no. still keep the place. No. 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 Lee. We're, we're finding the land. We're, we don't we, have, we don't, haven't gotten there yet. That's what I'm saying. This is still pretty high level. We're, we're still assessing, but we no, would need to find no, a parcel. You're going to build out and see that people want it before you. You're going to open up a big can of worms for you guys. I think I'm going to try to get on the power to see that people want it before you do it. Well, it's still just being talked about. Yeah, and say so we're 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 putting the cart a little before the horse here, Lee. But even if we put it on a ballot, if everybody everybody says no, we want to stay in the building, and if if there's enough of a public outcry, we'll look at that. But the goal here is to get the numbers together to say, okay, this is what it's going to cost. Example A: We're going to stay in the building. We need to do the following things. The bricks need to re be repointed. That wall in the back has to be fixed. The windows need to be replaced. The if heat. we're going to the heating system there's no heat upstairs heating, air conditioning. if we're going to do anything yeah. with that we have to do this and it's going to be x number of dollars yeah, in order to use the second floor it's going to be x number of dollars to make it ada compliant uh, we want to have that so that we can say okay example a is going to be x number of dollars example b which is a new building is going to be y number of dollars and make a very very black and white decision based on that the building is falling apart i mean I you could see it all around you. It's just a matter of time. And, well, it's it's yeah. an old building. It needs yeah. it needs it wasn't upkeep. Maintained. It needs upkeep, yeah. and there's a lot of upkeep that has been skipped. I know yep. one of the early things that I did when I was on the board was I tackled the the whole roof 
stop it gutter thing that we had going on. And that has stopped the, the water infiltration that you can see on that wall over there. But there are still other things that we have to do. There's, like I said, the windows, the, the ceiling upstairs is falling down because of not having heating or air conditioning or any kind of climate control up there. Um, the fact is we don't have climate control up there. The windows, so we put two new windows in the back there because one of them actually legitimately fell out of the building. Um, there's a section of floor that is not down upstairs. There is a laundry list of things that has to be done beyond what we see just when we walk in yeah. here and we do the meeting. There's a lot of underutilized or unused space that without spending huge amounts of money, we simply can't use. And like we we kind of we, we skirt a line when we open up the building for like the, the historical and the alumni rooms periodically because it's technically not ADA accessible. If you have somebody that has a mobility issue or somebody that's in a wheelchair, they can't go up. And that's a big problem. That's possibly even a legal problem for it us. It is. Um, not to mention, uh, I've done the ADA stuff for the past couple of years. We are like just barely ADA compliant for the purposes of being polling site. Like we're, we're at the cusp. If they change something where it's more stringent, we may have to spend money to make ourselves accessible so that people can come in here and vote. There's a lot of things that we want to catalog for this so that it's not just us talking heads up here, making a decision, but that you and everybody else kind of understands why we're approaching the problem the way that we're approaching. We the should problem. probably make some inquiries. Like for example, I'm looking out the window. Maybe we can buy that, that whole piece next door. I mean, I don't know that they have it for sale. I'm sure they don't. I mean, have we'd, have to, we'd have to look around and see, yeah. see what you don't even know. You yeah. may be able to go over yeah. there and they say, oh, yeah, we'd sell it to you. Can I tell you a secret? But, you know. Sue knows everyone. <laughs> yeah, I know. Sue, if, if we're going to find a piece of property, Sue's going to know where and, and who. Oh, and this when. is such I ideal piece. piece. This piece is so yeah. it's flat. It's yeah. We want to find, we yeah, find something we just su need the, suitable. We just need to put more equipment on that playground. Yeah. The other thing is long term, I know everybody has attachments to the building again, histor historical significance and the like. We don't want to carry two buildings just for the, the sheer operating costs. Because right. if we don't, if we move to a new building, but we keep this one, we've effectively doubled, doubled. the issues. We now have two buildings. Amazing. We still have to maintain this one. We still have the underlying problems well, that I was I saying said, about with the windows. That's why I said we ought to contact the realtor. Yeah. We may have a realtor come in here and say, you know what? I can't sell this place to shape it. Sid. You'd have to put two hundred thousand dollars in with, for me to even consider selling it. Well, yeah. at that point, if, 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 yeah, it all depends. It's ready to be torn down. It, it depends on interest. I don't think yeah. we're at the point where it's ready to get torn down for the the yeah. purposes of being on the record. But there are a lot of things that has to be done to this building in yeah. order to really use it for what it should be used for. Um, but you never know. I fact, I just I have a friend I just heard from yesterday. Owns a building or bought a new building over in the Pittsburgh area. From the outside, you would, I know the building. You would say, wow, this is, this is going to be perfect for him. Mm -hmm. The inspectors came in yesterday and they said, you know what? Footers are all bad. This is bad. Yeah. That's bad. That's bad. They're going to tear it down. They have to tear it down. Oof. Yeah. Hopefully we don't have anything so it's like a that. Huge, yeah. They made a huge mistake by not having this yeah. inspected it's before a they bought building. it. It's yeah. A the it's bones, just, the bones are good. It's just, it's not. It's, yeah. yeah. And it, aside from the things you're giving out, it's not really what's needed for us. Yeah. So it was a school it's, originally, it's, and it's very much laid it, out like a school. It's not perfect idea. No. Yeah. No. Ideal place for us. I'm going gonna, gonna to write that letter to M. Night Shyamalan. Yeah. The other, the other thing to consider is, depending on where we're at with that, which is the next item on the right. agenda, is Berks County is actually turning back some of their right. uh, ARP grant program money. The deadline is March 31st, and they're going to be awarding a maximum of a million dollars or 25% of a total cost of a project, whichever is less, which we could use technically for water or sewer projects or things like culverts That's, or like the building, yeah. for example. So what I was thinking, we're not going to have, 31st. it's this March 31st. I this, turn in the culvert yeah, project. That's, that's actually what yeah. I was going to say is we're not going to have the building together enough to ask for money for that. However, we are going to be able to supply a packet of here's the culverts. We have four culverts that we want to do. It's going to cost us. I don't know, $250,000. Um, here's what they are. Here's the, the engineering designs. We have already applied for permits. And I think we, of, of projects, we'd be in good standing I, to be I able do to that. do that. And just take that money that we would have spent right. Right. and Instead let's keep it someplace yeah. where right. when well, we do need it. Specifically, it's there. there's, there's no shortage of things to be done with roads. I we know. could turn around and use that $250,000 for other road work related projects. Yeah. We could crack yeah. seal, yeah. we could, we could do school road. We could do a section of school road, a small section of school road. 
Um, we could well, we could do a bunch yeah. of other things. That's two hundred and fifty thousand right. dollars that we wouldn't have I, to spend. I guess in my mind, I want to make sure that at some point when we're ready to make this decision, that we have the money yes. to do a playground properly. Yes. yes. And one of the nice things that we have, since we have a couple of people from the MTCA there, uh, I highly value the synergy that we have with you guys because we yes. as a municipal entity are not able to get grants in the same ways that a charity like yourselves are. So when we, whenever we go to move, we could do something like contribute $50,000 to you for a playground. And you would then be able to take that and get matching grants from either like DCNR or BCCD or... Um, a lot of the playground installers, and Don, I had conversations with you about this when we were doing that grant application a number of years ago. There are some playground uh, resellers that will match. If you say, I have $50,000, they will give you $100,000 worth of playground equipment. Like You have to find the right provider for that, but you have a lot more things in your toolbox for playgrounds specifically and grants therein than we do. We, we can go after things with the building, like with the, the evacuation yep. site and all sorts of other stuff, but some of the recreational stuff we can't get or we can't get as easily. So whenever that happens, we're certainly going to work with you guys and leverage the things that we can leverage with you to make sure that if we do move, we move right. Yeah, well, I guess that's part of my impatience is I don't want this to be a two or three year process yeah. because we have, we, need, we have a need right now. We do. Yeah. And... It, I agree with with both yeah. of you. It doesn't make any sense to put fifty thousand dollars over there if we're going to sell the building. Yeah, but if we can find out quicker, a little sooner than later, maybe that is what we need to do. Right. But that playground, it's it needs it needs it to needs love. It, it needs, needs love. love. Yeah, it needs yeah. a lot of love. That's the, right. right and, and plus, we have people in the community that can't right. even use it. Right. You know, even as nice as it is right now, right. you're in a wheelchair. You can't go in the swing. You can't. You know, there's no walking track for, for anybody to go around. Right. The, the, the problem last year was contractors never called back. I know. Yeah, last and year so, was right. unique. So, yeah. so I get my schedule tomorrow. I'll be making appointments for March. I'm say, you're going to come here, meet me this day, and this is what we need. Mm -hmm. Sue and I are going to do a walkthrough of the upstairs, make a detailed list of what we think needs to be done, have their expert opinion give us, you know, input, and we're going to get that number. At this point, almost everything needs done. If I could, uh, I'll, I'll bother you, and we'll go around to places, get us whatever drawings you have. We'll work with that, see what we all need, and get numbers, and that's it. I mean, what else can we do? We, we can get the, the information, present it, have a discussion, and hash it back and forth, and then see what we want to do. How many acres do we need to build? Ten. Ideally, ten. Ten minimum. Because you would need playgrounds. I think we're yeah. five right yeah. now. We're at five, but we want to have more space because, like yeah. right now, the like the basketball court is basically on the ba the baseball field. Yeah. Like re it works again. It's much like this building. It works, but it's really not laid out in its best possible way. Right. Well, keep your ears open. Yeah, and then things like you would need uh, at least three double bays for all the equipment. More, but yeah, I, I would probably want to shoot for four, four or five. Days. Yeah. They need their own uh, like hazmat shower and eye wash station. These are things that, again, are not here. Um, they would, I would want them to have their own bathroom, you know, in the garage. So they don't have to come in the main building. You know, having adequate bathrooms at a, a main building is, is simple things like that. Wire for Wi-Fi, things that... No one could have anticipated. Yeah. Not even 20 years Maybe ago. Maybe somebody would like to donate 10 acres to us. We can call it the John Doe. Whatever yeah, yeah we, can, we, can, well, we can put a plaque right, up. Right, but that's another consideration. A big plaque. Could, yeah. could we have a fundraiser? Could we have it where people would donate things if they would receive a plaque in, in a room? Or if we would put... I, I would want carpeting in a building, but like I don't. I, I, do I was yeah, say, I, I don't know, know that municipal yeah, entities municipal can do that. Do that. I don't know. Um, but you can, can name donate, the playground, right? Well, I mean, so, people. I think people can, donate, the, people, yeah. playground. people can donate things at any time, yeah. and that's one of the like, specifically with the playground. That's one of the benefits of the community association. Yeah. Is they can do. They can be kind of the fundraising arm of things, or the grant gathering arm yeah. of things that we can't. Um, so with that grant program. Yeah. Who do we have to contact to get all that information I will, submitted? I will ask, I'll send an email to McCarthy Engineering okay. and have them just give me the, the packets, the straight up, like just, that's their- it's, it's on the website. Oh, no, 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 like in order to submit for the county one, what I'm saying is I want McCarthy Engineering to give me a packet of these are the four culverts. This is the, this is, these are the project plans all in one place. 
and then I'll go and apply on the Berks County okay. website. Why don't you make a motion to that effect? Okay. Because if you wait until next month, this this is due okay. the 31st, which is I, the day of our meeting. I will make a motion to authorize the submittal of the culvert projects for 2022 for the Berks County ARP grant program. Second. Roll call, Peter. Aye. J Irene. Aye. Sorry. Jim. Aye. Okay. And make sure you put on projects that we haven't even oh, I'm gonna... talked about yet because yeah. it's it's 25% up to 1 million. Yeah. yeah. So if we give a million dollars worth of projects, maybe we can get to it. I mean, we can put Spur Road on. I'd have to get McCarthy <laughs> out to, to look at the next no, section Spur of Spur Road. Road. Spur Road's done. Oh, no, this is not Spur. School, sorry. School, school. Is, school is bad. School is bad, and it would be School's probably about $500,000 to do an FDR for the mile. I mean, there's a lot. Of, there's a lot of... You could easily come up with a million dollars worth of projects. Yeah. Okay. Do we, do we want to amend that motion slightly to include mm -hmm. some additional road projects, including School Road? I'll, I'll make a motion to amend my previous motion to include school road and any other applicable road projects for the Berks County ARP grant. Second. All right. All right. Peter made the motion. And second. Roll call. Peter. Aye. Aye, Ray. Aye. Jim. Aye. Okay. okay, before we go to the next thing, I'd actually like to jump down to item number 29, which is the Conrad Weiser Youth Baseball request to use the field. Uh, their president, Kevin Bender, uh, spoke with Sue. They would like to use our ball field this year for practices and games. However, the field is in very bad shape. Um, they don't have the manpower or the funds to get the field into shape. Uh, the field would not be available uh, Saturday, May 14th for the MTCA car show because of the scheduling conflict. Uh, but what we would need to discuss is oh. authorizing or, or paying for some of the replacement. It's a thing well, called first Dynatex. Of all, you, need, you need to authorize them to use the field. Okay. So step one, I'm okay with them using the field. Um, I asked, I sent an email yesterday. I actually, what, I left a voicemail for, for him to get me something in writing. In the past, um, um, they had requested that we don't charge them, and we said we won't charge you if you maintain the field yeah. and get a board fund. Yeah, I would say let's do the same thing. We won't charge them for the use of the fields as long as they provide a porta potty and maintain the field after we get it to a, a manageable state. Um, so, really, I don't think you'd have to change much in the letter. Um, what we would need to discuss then is the approval of buying the dirt. It's a thing called Diamond Tex. Um, or Dynatex, excuse me, and uh, authorizing the road crew, the payment of road crew wages to assist like the community association with getting the field ready. Right. Um, since we have a couple representatives from the community association, Don, I know you wanted to say a few things. Um, for the purposes of, and I hate to make you walk or anything like that, for the, for the purposes of the Zoom getting you clearly, would you mind coming up here and talking towards the microphone? Um, Don Hike, 41 Main Street, president of the MTCA. Uh, yesterday, we uh, sent down to the new enterprise Stone and Lime Co Company to get a load of Domitex, which we had which we barely really need. There on the third baseline, uh, the rain has washed out the third baseline since it was never worked on for the next the last two years. The ground is as hard as a rock. Uh, we'd like to put more Dynatex on there. I do have a bill here that was paid for by MTCA, the first one. And I would like to uh, know if you would like to pay to have Dynatex all in here by... Um, well, I thought you much... already got a load. Somebody told me... Yes, we got, got, we got a load right there. Okay. It's not enough. How much do we need, do you know? Uh, according to the what is the square feet we need at least 10 uh, 10 times uh, that's your i only gave you the information you guys decided yeah, so, to so, I'm so, so I'm, i would like to know if you'd be uh willing to pay for diamond tax for the baseball field 
Well, I think you need to give I, them. Yeah, no, I, I want a little more information. Thing. I'm not opposed to it, but let's 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 talk numbers here. How many loads and what kind of cost are we looking at? Okay, the first load, what you see out there is five hundred and thirty-two dollars and twelve cents. Uh, it was thirty-five point seventy-seven tons. And so I'm looking at, according to Google, it was about 44 square feet needed for a Little League baseball field. How many more loads do you think are needed? Five. five? Oh, sure. Five for two times five. Well, Roughly. why don't you let me order it in the future? We may be able to get... We might be able to get a coasters. I did not order that. I did not order that. No, no, hold on, hold on, hold on. Yeah, yeah. So, so Don, whether you guys ordered it or Sue, yeah, I know Sue, you didn't. I know, I know. Yeah. In, in the future, before you do that, reach out because we could probably get it through coasters at a discount. Okay. We did. Yeah. I, I, I was here. I called for a price. I called for a price. Okay. I did not order it. Okay. I was told, I actually called New Enterprise and I was told that Matthew. Uh, Bennett showed up and got it. Okay, I did not order it. So, give it to Yeah, it's about thirty-two hundred dollars. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So, well, on the the first first item, I have no objections None. to okay. reimbursing the five hundred and thirty-two dollars and twelve cents for what what you've already picked up. One, yeah, I, yeah, I have no problem with that. I'll leave it to the discussion of the board. I also have no problem with authorizing the purchase of five more loads. Um, what we would need from the MTCA is assistance on getting something coordinated for doing the actual installation of the dirt, turning the soil, et cetera. Okay. And I'd be even go willing to go so far as putting it out there as an open invitation to the road crew that we will pay the road crew wages to assist the MTCA with that. Uh, Butch has also reached out to one of his farm friends mm -hmm. to disc the field, to break it up. Okay, good. That, and that's... And whatever cost is, if, it, if, it, if it's a volunteer, it doesn't want to be a volunteer, we'll gladly pay for it. Okay. Okay. So we do, we do have coordinated with the president. He said, whenever we decide to come out and work on it, he gets some of the parents to come out and help us rake it. Okay. Even better. Right? So yeah. I'll, I'm going to make a, a series of motions then. So uh, I think I should order because I can get coaster. Right. Yeah. That's, that's, right. Yeah. yeah. So first motion is, is I'd like to approve the reimbursement of $532.12 the MTCA for their, their purchase of soil for the ball field. Second. Roll call Peter. Aye. Irene. Aye. Jim. Aye. Okay. Are you, go, are you is this going to be is the cut is the art is the end <clears throat> wait he has more it? he has more motions to make. yeah okay. one, one second um before i do that would it be cheaper like you have somebody that would be able to pick up five loads i could get a price delivered yeah to yeah as i say delivered delivery is probably not going to be that outlandish <laughs> considering they're going to be able I, to I just Oh, yeah. I'll, I'll, let's just drop that okay uh, next motion is to order um as new enterprise the, the company uh, order five more loads of the Diamond Tech soil from New Enterprise. Second. Just a minute. Just a minute. Roll call. Peter. Hi. Irene. Hi. Jim. Hi. And Lee, that is with delivery. We would have it delivered. We would have it delivered. Yeah, it's going to cost more to have it delivered from them than it will from our trucker. I mean, how much does your trucker cost? $88. I mean, $85. An hour. Uh, our, our deliveries, they usually give us cheaper because we're a member of CoStars. Yeah. And so are they. It's going to be cheaper it's, through us. Yeah. We'll, we'll, we'll just take If it that, isn't, we'll, we'll let you know. Yeah. Um, the other, the final motion, unless any of you have a motion that you'd add to this, is I'd like to authorize. Uh, members of the road crew to submit time for assisting with this project if they choose not to do it in a volunteer basis. Do you want to say how many road crew or not? I mean, uh, and uh, really any of the road crew. Yeah. I, yeah. I don't. I don't feel the no, need to set a number. Yeah. Exactly. Right. 
<laughs> True. And I'll second that. Just a minute. Just a minute. Roll call, Peter. Hi. Irene. Hi. Jim. Hi. Okay. Uh, which? Uh, the next one was delivered. I think we ought to have the field ready before it gets delivered. I, I agree. Because you don't want to have a huge pile of dirt that you have to yeah. move around more than you have to. Uh, because you, you're going to kill some grass because some piles out here now and you don't have to deal with Yeah. One of the other things that I had as a concern, and this is, I'll defer to you or whoever's doing the, the work on the, the infield. With the amount of dirt that we're adding, are we going to have to take some of the dirt, old dirt out? No, that's that's a fair statement, but I just want us to to maybe try and time it appropriately. Like, so if we can get some somebody to come out and turn the soil, and the community association can coordinate with the ball field. The trouble with, with turning that soil up there is your fabric underneath that dirt mm -hmm. the whole field. Now, if you dig that up and you're digging up the, the fiber, how now you're going to have to replace the fiber? How deep is the fabric? Well, we're on third base, the fabric showing. Oh, well, on okay. The other side, we can't even find where the base <laughs> are. We, are we going to be able to have somebody come in and turn it with a tractor? Uh, uh, okay. I mean, that's, <laughs> um, he, had, he, had, he had a man in Utah who had a 70 inch wide tiller. He, and he said he, he does people's gardens. I mean, you could. Oh, well, if you get a tiller in there and it attaches the fabric, oh, it's just. The fabric. Yeah. So if we get something in there that just loosens the surface tension. Yeah. And then put dirt on top of it. Now, the surface tension, I mean, getting rid of the weeds that have been going in there for two years. It may take a while so all the weeds are taken care of. This might be the, like, the worst year it's going to be in shape. But mm -hmm. at least from now on, if we have some understanding that. We get one or two loads every year and keep it in shape mm -hmm. rather than letting it go. Uh, yeah, no, I, I agree with you, but I'm, I'm just. I, my, I, I, this is just my opinion again. Uh, why, why we don't get a, a landscape arena and spray it and then just be kind of egg on top of it? Well, we, have, we still have to break up the soil. The problem is the soil is a brick. From sitting so we got to do something to, to dislodge it a little bit otherwise spraying a little bit of weed killer probably wouldn't be a, an awful idea i'm not a huge fan of weed killer but it does have its uses um but bottom line is we're we're okay with spending the money on buying the soil to help get the ball field back into the right shape what we need your help with is kind of marshalling the manpower we'll volunteer anybody interested from the road crew to help but we're going to need your help for the kind of the, the the how, so to speak, on getting people out to break up the soil and then getting the, the soil smoothed around, putting the bases back where they're supposed to go, putting the lines down, whatever else has to be. Yeah. Yes. So they want to start practicing late March. Yeah. So we have to get some nice weather in there to get that done. Yeah. Right. As soon as that's broken up, you can get in there and back home, mm. spread it out, break it, and that's when it's done. Okay. Anything further on that for you two? No. Yeah. Okay. Wonder what so, kind of equipment we need to break that up. They they have a thing that there's they drag. There's there tools out there you can yeah. get the discs or something like that. Anything to break up the surface tension and get the weeds out. Of can it. we rent one of those someplace? The township doesn't. Put, we have. Oh, okay. People who have tools like. All right. Yeah, that's what I mean. Like, as long as we're not tearing up whatever the, the geotextile fabric right. is under there, then uh, again, I'll leave the, the how up to you guys, but we'll we'll buy the dirt yeah. and we'll volunteer or offer up some of the, the labor force to be able to help you with that. Um, back to the original agenda point, um, I would say, I don't think you really have to alter the letter much. The only thing we might want to add is that we will take steps to like, get the field ready, but then we still want you to do the, the routine upkeep on it throughout the season and still provide uh, a porta potty. Yeah, that's what this, that's what their thing says. Yeah, so yeah. I'll, I'll make they, a motion. They have to provide us with a certificate of insurance. Yeah, yeah. The, pretty much the same thing as the prior year. Yeah. So yeah. I'll make a motion to authorize Conrad Weiser Youth Baseball to, to use the field again this year. Second. <laughs>
Roll call, Cater. Aye. Irene. Aye. Jim. Aye. Yes. Oh, thank you. So pass that down to Sue. Oh, you can see that. You can leave okay. it right there. <laughs> Usually Sue gives it that receive stamp. Oh, yeah, but, yeah, yeah. Uh, it needs your special stamp. Yeah. Sorry. Yeah, anyway. Uh, next up is the Cold Summits Farmers Preserve Industrial Park Traffic Planning and Design. Uh, we received the traffic study from Traffic Planning and Design Incorporated. Uh, Jim attended the meeting at the Wilmester Borough Hall on February the 8th. Uh, Jim, you want to add anything well, to that? they still have all the same issues they've had how how are they going to make that turn at third and go down to second uh the company though i have never sat through a presentation and i've been i've you know i don't know if all of you know this but i was a city councilman in western pennsylvania for 12 years this company cares more about making sure that everybody's happy than anybody i ever met they are even willing to buy the property on the corner if wow. they have to make that wider they are willing to take Second Street uh, straight through if people will sell them the land. I mean, they're they're amazing with what they're what they're willing to do. Well, uh, but is there still issues with how they're going to get through town the way it is now? Oh, absolutely. And Wilmersdorf Borough is not happy about it, and I don't blame them because they're going to have issues. For the for those of you who are aware of it, there was a problem this week where the truck got stuck yeah. there and held yeah. traffic up forever. I was personally party to that one that it got stuck yeah. for about thirty minutes. And you're bringing about a hundred and I think it's about one hundred and sixty five both ways. No, uh, no, 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 no. Was 450. that one? No, four fifty. Like four fifty. Double trip. Four fifty. Yeah. Round. Well, trip. that's okay. not, but that's okay. not all through Wilmer's Yeah. Some of, it's, some of it's some of it's coming yeah. from south, I yeah. think. Oh. But at any rate. It, it's it's going to create it's, it's going to create issues, but the the company's willing to help. They're going to be contacting PennDOT to see what PennDOT is willing to to do, since that is a PennDOT road. And uh, but the company themselves, their president, is probably one of the nicest people you're ever going to meet. I encourage you to go if they come in, as they're talking about coming in and doing a public meeting. I encourage you to go and listen to these people. Uh, they really have great intentions. They also give five percent back to the school districts that neighbor it every year, uh, in which case probably talking about 85,000 plus dollars per year that they're gonna just make a donation back. That's and of course yeah. that was brought up, well, the facilities in Lebanon County, how does that benefit us? And they said, we'll, we'll, we'll divide that up since you're putting up with a lot of so, activation. Did, was there anyone so, from the school district there? Because no, it passes no, right by the- no, um, There wasn't the anybody there from the school district. It was just the municipalities, but- but they're they're an impressive company. They're a very impressive company. Yeah. Speaking of the school district, I did send an email to Dr. Dickman, the superintendent. I also sent it to Kristen Hoffman, the principal at West, yeah. and Maggie Shearer in the yeah. yeah. Just to make them aware of what's going on. Good. Thank you. Yeah. Thank you. Was there any updates on they had talked about subdividing that small the small piece that's actually in Marion? Oh, they're they're gonna donate that to Okay. the neighboring farm okay. uh, that's kind of where i thought they ended up but i didn't see specifically if they were doing yeah. that or not so and they're going to make every effort possible to keep the people of stonecroft happy which i told them is going to be a yeah it's going to be that's a, that's a big be a challenge uh, um, but they're going to do everything they, they were just kind enough to say that you know we're, we want to make everybody happy we want to be a good neighbor would it and be so i was impressed would it be worthwhile as the township to maybe make the introduction between the developer and the hoa probably. And, i mentioned it to them before i left that yeah. they probably ought to get a hold of the hoa and i gave them information to get a hold of them <laughs> yeah because and, and try and schedule a meeting with them so that they understand what's going on yeah other than some objections but this isn't going to happen overnight you're not going to see oh, that yeah. you're yeah. not going to see that for probably two years minimum other than some objections to just basic things like the traffic if they donate that piece that's in Marion. A lot of the jurisdictional stuff that we would have, we no longer have because it's not actually within our our borders at all. So it might be, especially if they're receptive to making people happy, making sure that we get the introduction between the HOA and the developer. And, and they have made a couple of changes to the plans already. I think the one building that was going to actually be connected is now being kept separate. They're talking to Martins about, about utilizing that. And they changed the parking lot around a little bit. Um, okay, well, that's but, good. But good. The tra as far as the traffic goes, yeah, it's going to be an issue. Yeah. 
Okay, uh, next up is the Main Street Traffic Study. This was performed to assess uh, viability of stop signs at the Church in Maine, Water in Maine, and Sharp in Maine intersections. Uh, we're still waiting for them to turn in the report, but uh, with any luck, we'll be able to put a stop sign at one of those intersections. I don't anticipate three of them being suitable for that based on the requirements for a stop sign, but we may be able to put in a stop sign at least one place which will help with the whole speeding and other traffic flow. Can we contact them and see what's taken so long? Yeah, you can send a line to- It'd be nice uh, if we could talk about this on Thursday. Okay, next up real quick on the culverts. The culvert at uh, Marion Drive near Jacob Weiss uh, can be submitted for the dirt and gravel low volume road grant. Um, Jim M thinks a motion was made at last year to resubmit this. Um, I, I know we, we made a motion at, well, that was like two years ago. Well, that was we made like a motion it was initially submitted and then not, I think it was January of no, this year. I, couldn't find it. I made a motion. I know I made a motion at one you of the board made a meetings motion for them to put it back in for oh, grant can funding. Can you just make another motion? Sure. Just yeah, to, yeah, 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 yeah. Just yeah. To cover yeah I'll, I'll stuff. be happy to do that, but I, I know I did that because I missed last month's yeah. board meeting, but I, whether it was the previous board meeting or the workshop, I did motion to have them submit it for funding again, because that was the whole thing, end of the year that we were looking at it. And we were like, yeah. well, we can start it at any time, but if we can get yeah. grant money for it, why yeah. would we not? So I'll make a motion if it's not already been approved to have McCarthy Engineering submit the culvert on Marion Drive by Jacob Weiss for dirt and gravel low volume road funding. Second. Roll call, Peter. Hi. Irene. Hi. Jim. Hi. Okay. Follow up on that, which I'll be talking to you to make sure that we have kind of our ducks in a row of if it doesn't get funded, that we can quickly move on getting that started because we do have the permitting for that. Uh, the next three culverts, the one at Marion Drive north of School Road by Oscar Manbeck, the one on Sheridan Road by Gerald Hoover, and the one on Reichert Road, um, they're in varying states. Uh, we're still waiting on permits for three out of the four. We actually received the permit for the one on Reichert Road. So that's one that we can, we can connect over the next couple of weeks and start figuring out what exactly has to be done and who we need to do that. I, I the engineer okay. Okay, we'll reach out to uh, either Jim McCarthy or Craig. I think Craig was at the last meeting, correct? Yeah. I, I want to um, say I saw an email that they're re, like, or maybe it was on the bill, but they're re, they're working on it. Okay. Just say that. Okay, so I'll, I'll follow up and I'll keep you in the loop on that, Butch, but we'll, we'll get what we need ready for Rikert Road. Uh, it's, uh, We have to ask him, like I said, there's certain things I'm glad he's willing to serve on the road crew, but because of him having a construction company, there may be things that he's either going to be either uh, unwilling or unable to do because of that being his primary profession. But let's, let's ask him and see. Mm -hmm. Yeah, we'll, we'll figure out, we have what has to be done and where we can connect with the, the group of road crew and say, hey, this is when we're thinking about starting this, who can come in? We know Butch and Lynn are going to be able to be in during the week. Is anybody else? And you may find that somebody says, yeah, I can, I can come in. We're going to be doing this Monday through Friday. I can come in Monday, Tuesday, and maybe Thursday or something like that. That we'll have to figure out the staffing aspect of it. And like I said, Ryan, very, very good at what he does, but that's what he does during the day and he may not be able to help. Yeah. So. Okay. Uh, one kind of addendum point to that is, uh, Butch, I want you and I to start calling the uh, A1 line painting people now that we're into the kind of hopefully warmer part of the new year to find out uh, when they're going to be painting the remaining lines from last year that they didn't finish. Uh, and then you and I need to connect and see what we want to do for 2022's line painting, any of the areas that, that weren't mm. done in the past year or two. So. We'll follow up on that, but we, you and I both need to call them and find out when they're coming out to do like the crosswalks, the remainder of the double yellow, the single whites, um, any of the things triangle. that, and the triangle, yeah. Uh, anything that they didn't do this past year. 
Okay, uh, next item on the agenda was one that I asked as a uh, citizen, not as a board member, which was the abandoning a small portion at the end of Shady Cabin Circle. Uh, I don't know that I've seen any updates on this. I've been kind of keeping it at arm's reach for, you know, just conflict reasons, but uh, I haven't seen or heard any updates. So I guess we'll just talk to Andy at the next meeting, mm -hmm. see if he has anything. Uh, road projects for 2022. I'm still working on making a full list. Uh, this is largely going to be the culverts along with some crack sealing, some repaving, and uh, I'll say an extended wish list for some of the roads that I'd like to do should we have the funding or if we get grant money from uh, like Berks County through the ARP turn back. Uh, but I'll hopefully have that together before, maybe not this upcoming Thursday, but for the March meeting. Um, the rental inspection ordinance proposal, uh, which would allow access to rental properties every other year. Uh, we're still working on that. I have not gotten a chance to go through all of them. It's just a function of time just hasn't happened. Um, so that's one that will, just for the sake of time, because it's already almost 11, we'll move that to the March meeting when we've actually had a chance to go through all of them. I believe there's six total. There's five examples and the one that we had been originally looking at um, and just redline and decide which one is the best or what is the best mix. Um, building maintenance, uh, we touched on this a bit earlier. We're kind of putting a hiatus on some of the building maintenance unless it is critical mm -hmm. uh, so that we can assess the overall cost of repairing this building up to the, the state that we want it versus building a new building. Irene's going to be working with contractors and getting estimates for things. Um, we'll all be contributing, but I think Irene has kind of taken the, the point on that one. Um, the just, Go ahead. Yeah, just a quick thing. I know, Sue, did Tri-County ever get back to you about the buzz and system? I called them and told them the motion was made and accepted. But I haven't heard okay. That. And the concern was over the front door, the condition that it's in. So if Mike happens to give us a call. I asked and, him to try yeah. and get us a quote by one of the meetings. But yeah, that's okay. So we're just working on that still from okay. the last meeting we approved the buzz and system. And I'm pretty sure that, and I think Don asked at last meeting, um, that could be disabled, like if it's unlocked. I, I have to yeah. ask them once yeah. they come out here. Yeah. I'm sure it can. Yeah, be. yeah. Okay, next is the credit card use policy. Um, I have pretty much snapped that into the, I'll, I'll just quickly scroll through it. I have a, oh, a draft copy of the handbook. I need to do some oh, formatting wow. and stuff on. Yeah. Um, I need to add some things in there about sick leave uh, because some people like yeah. Sue have days that they can use that are paid time off or like, sick days. No, you get paid time off. Okay. I'm just um, saying, I don't get sick so days. not, not everybody has <laughs> yeah. those like sick, sick days, vacation days, they're all paid time off. Um, so I want to outline something in there basically that if you're sick, don't come to work. If yes. you have a, a paid time off day, you should use that as a sick day. If you don't, it's a, a day without pay, basically just clearly outlining what the, if yeah. you're sick policy is, um, as well as, uh, anything around if you're positive for COVID. Uh, what you should do in terms of like, if you test positive, you have to do this many days or until you have a negative test or whatever. And I may mm -hmm. defer to, to the draft to you since you're the medical yeah. professional, yeah. but I took all of your credit card stuff Excellent. and snapped that into a section around um, credit cards, uh, applicability, issuance, the limits, uh, authorized use, unauthorized mm -hmm. use. We just have to create um, an affidavit for Yeah, yeah I just I have to make okay. a simple affidavit that I have okay. read all, all things found within the section. I'm actually going to go through a number, a lot of the sections, since they're the, the main one that I found for Hemlock that I used as a base did not have numbered sections. So I okay. want to be able to say, like, I have read everything in the Marion Township Employee Handbook in Section 7, outlining acceptable use for credit cards and blah, 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 you know, that, that sort of yeah. thing. Um, I, I think this is awesome because it's, it's, again, it's a step forward in standardizing policies so that anyone coming into the position said, this is what is, of course, every board is free to do what it wants, but at the same time, it, it reinventing the wheel over and over again is, is extremely frustrating. Yeah. And it's, it's something that right now, good, good practice. It's just, it's just good practice because yeah. you have a situation where somebody could do something and you're like, you're not supposed to do that. Yeah. Well, you never told me not to. So, yeah, um, jumping back just a step with the, uh, the, the buzzing thing with the camera. I know mm -hmm. we had asked for quotes on a camera system. It's included. In it's, it. it's included. It says okay. video, yeah. so I would okay. think that means camera. Okay. So, so one of the things <laughs> that um, probably Tuesday I'm going to be, I brought a piece of plywood and I'm going to be hanging the equipment over there. Mm -hmm. um, in addition to file server, you can actually have 
cameras, have that be a DVR for cameras. Um, I have a, a doorbell, but it's like a ring knockoff doorbell mm -hmm. that I can, I can see it yeah. and I can talk through it yeah. and you'd be able to do that from like your computer even. So whether I think, that's, I think that's what he said it does. It's probably not going to be integrated with the computer. I'd have yeah, to look at what. Yeah, that's what he said. Okay. Well, yeah. I don't think I saw the design for that. If you if you have There's anything no that's well, there's a number. I'll give you the number. Look it up. Okay. I googled it. Okay. Yeah. Send send, <laughs> send to me. I'll I'll take a look. But if nothing else, it's a good first step, like with the one camera above the door. But depending on what it is, it may be difficult to add other cameras in if we want to in the future, which we can either hybrid the two. If it's an IP camera, I can always mm -hmm. grab it off of another feed. But last I left off, it was, we weren't sure if it was the buzzer or the video or the buzzer and the video. It's or video. Okay. So either way, send me the, the thing or let me know what it is. I'll look it up and I'll find well, out what the specs. I, sent you all I, I, I have one cross light on emails, but. Well, no, um, this was like the other month. Yeah, I know. I, when I got it, I yeah. sent it to all of you. I know. I saw what you sent. I just didn't recall seeing what, okay. what if anything okay. was a video, but either way. Um, Next is the collection of engineering and other administrative costs uh, and the procedure proposal. There was an email that was sent from Kozlov Stout. Um, Irene, you have been kind of ground zero on this, so I'll yeah. turn it over to well, you. Well, I, I did not click on their attachments, but I'm happy to see that. So um, I, I can honestly say most people that we send a bill to are paying it without any problem. There's been some issue because of the back billing and, and we have recovered all but two people have paid on all the old bills three years ago. So what we need to do is include a form um, with our current permit application saying that you may be responsible for additional engineering and legal fees. The other problem is we need to reach out to Craft and because if people are pulling the permits off of their website, they need to be notified of that too. Yeah. So the other thing is we need to go through billing for Stone. Well, that's oh, okay. So you want to talk about it? Let, no, let's okay. do this first. Let's okay. do this first. Okay. 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 Let's do that Thursday night. But sure. I didn't, I, I skimmed it, but I didn't okay. like really read either. through it. It's just yeah. policy. Yeah, it's, it's short, but I didn't, yeah. Yeah. I didn't give it the yeah, kind okay. of scrutiny that I want to give it. But um, so do you want to move into the, the stone thing or do you want to go into the next item? You okay. Yeah. All right. So um, I was happy that we got an email from Andy and Jim. If you have time to help me, I already sent an email to Dan. So basically through contract pro provisions, we can go back to September of 2004 and go through any old engineering and legal bills that Stone Group may be responsible for as far as the fees go. When we sent them the most recent packet, that was what we initially thought was a three-year term limit, they only paid from 2019 to 2021, which would have been the three years according to that letter. But because Andy, Andy's office found that contract provision we are able to compile everything. I think, I can't recall what I, uh, I saw in the email. I, what I'm gonna do is compile all the data that we have here. Um, as far as you know, the group that we have, I always sent an email out to McCarthy. I think it gets the data from 2014. Um, and the firm that we used before McCarthy, if I can't find stuff in the boxes upstairs, we're going to have to reach out to that firm or firms. It was White Heigl, wasn't it? Yeah. You, think, you think it's been from 2004 to, for 10 years? You think it might well, have McCarthy been? McCarthy was hired in 2014. Yeah. yeah. So, so I'm hoping from 2004 to 2014 that they still have their data, uh, but it's really sifting through all the financial well, stuff. We have to our... find out if the previous treasurer yeah, built. built. Yeah. Oh, we don't even know so, that. Right. Yeah. And that's, right. from so what you said, it's probably not in QuickBooks, so we're going to have to dig no, through. No. There's nothing in QuickBooks. Yeah, we're going to have to yeah. dig through the boxes. Yeah. So it's going through the financials boxes upstairs, and, and I'm hoping Dan can come and help me if you'd like to help me out, Jim, too. Mm -hmm. We could always bring a box or two down here because it's warmer down here and, mm -hmm. and uh, sift through it. So if that's the case, we might be able to recover a chunk considerable, of funds. Considerable yeah. amount of money. Yeah, so so again, that that uh, makes me happy that, that there's that contract provision. My only concern is, is are they going to balk on it? But it's in the contract. It's legally binding. Right, it's in the contract. Right. And so, so what I, I'm going to do is compile all the information and hopefully um, if there's any issues, then of course we could 
have we submitted to Kozlov Stout and they will submit it for us. So I'm hoping that that's not the case, but they're not gonna like that letter and they're not gonna like that packet of information. So, but it was a little bit exciting. I was a little bit happy to, yeah. to, to see that, but I mean, it's more work, but. Well, it's, Andy, it's a considerable Andy amount of money. Was, there was good precedent yeah. for us to. Yeah. Mm -hmm. If it goes against us, can we yeah. go after you know on that? Since it was never billed. Um, no, I, I don't I, think so. I, I, I probably would, would leave well enough alone. The, the problem is, and, and we've all been finding this out as we move through things, we're finding out things weren't done, but things weren't done because they didn't know they could be done. Oh, and so we're again, not we're, blaming anybody, right, but... right. We're trying to establish policies and, and practices, um, that could easily move, continued forward. So I have just written up a couple of uh, pages in reference books so that the next person can do this without, again, reinventing the wheel. I hate to use that phrase over and over again, but I could tell you this year, I'm doing more stuff this year on the, in that system and in general in the office than I did last year. I could easily be down here with Sue probably three to four days a week doing stuff. I try to play catch up at times, you know, when I'm done with work, when I could get here, but there's such a volume of work that, that needs to be done all the time just to keep current. Um, but for example, with the items with Stone Group that they didn't pay, it was a bill for about $25,000. But because of the, the stuff that only fell within that three-year time period, they sent us only a check for a little over $6,000. So there's... Yeah, it's still nineteen thousand, but we, yeah. that's nineteen thousand yeah. that we know about. Yeah, and we can because yeah. of this, you can yeah. actually you can send them a revised letter saying like, yep. "Thank you for the first bit of it." Yeah, when can we expect the yep. remainder? Yeah, again, I, I don't want to blame anybody in the past right. that may may or may not have realized that right. they weren't getting paid. But you have done a phenomenal job Thank finding it, you. trying to collect it, uh, it's, and it's, and previous. It's, it's, treasurers were built were sending in their their hourly bills. You haven't built the township for a dime no so i just want people to know how much we appreciate thank you, you. thank you it's it's frustrating because we get back some pretty nasty letters and pretty nasty emails i know you do and i've had to forward some stuff right that. and and it's it, it's a polite email you know I, I i try to politely say hey listen we didn't know about this there was no way to know about this until and unless someone told us about us and and people like oh you're incompetent no there's so much information that comes in that front door that comes in that mailbox that comes in through emails, that comes in through um, phone calls, that it, it is so hard to keep track of all the data that comes into this office and 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 have it in a format. And thank God for Sue. I mean, Sue just I, keeps- I, I'm getting to the point where I can't remember things yeah, anymore. She's, she's, it's so much to keep track of. It is, of. it is. And the two of us, I, I, I feel like like I'm tearing up my hair with, with this. It, it, it's just one of those things, again, like, the functionality of, of the office, it, 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 it's really impactful for all the things that we have to do. I had no idea there was this much work to do. Mm -hmm. I, I could literally be down here five days a week. So I had yeah. at the very end of the agenda is one yeah. of the things that I had talked to Sue about is that we have Dan as a part-time right. treasurer or secretary. There's nothing stopping us. I know Dan's right. availability has been limited yeah. or minimal lately. There's nothing stopping us from getting an extra pair of hands in here, right. temporarily, permanently, et cetera, as another part-time assistant. Um, we'd obviously want to, you know, solicit some resumes and things right. like that to do that. But I, I think it would be beneficial with the amount of stuff that we have, and especially when we're we're trying to get things digitized to be able to, to put out on like the website or have stored on the the server and things like that. Might not be a bad idea to have somebody in to help, even if it's simple things like doing the minutes while Sue focuses yeah. on other stuff. Yeah. That's going to have to be like Sue's level of comfort. Just like yeah. a big chunk of, it takes me on a, on a good day, like three hours to do minutes. Mm -hmm. And that's partly my fault because I'm weird you're about answer, stuff. Yeah, but you're answering telephones and about stuff, but... emails and everything else in between. Well, yeah, I mean, I yeah. get like 50 emails a day. Just, yeah. you know, and that's not counting the junk. <laughs> yeah. 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 yeah, so I just, agree with you. It, yeah. may, it, may, it be may be time, time to get some, an yeah. extra pair yeah, of hands. It is, there's there's plenty of time. plenty of stuff to do. It's not like we're gonna we're gonna go. Um, I'm like, I mean, my filing is like getting atrocious. It's, but it's it not an exit. I'm well, you're anymore. you're yes, you're running into bottom line. You're running into two problems with your filing. <laughs> right. You're running out of space yeah. and you're running out of time. Mm -hmm. uh, we can help you with the time. We can try and figure out the space, whether it's repurposing something or moving something around or whatever. We can try and and stopgap that, but. 
bottom line is there's not enough sue to go around to do no, all the things no. you need to do on a day-to-day -day basis there needs to be like yeah, a and then i don't just have you i have planning right. commission mm -hmm. and then i get together the information for zoning hearing which there's not a lot of those but i have to get the information together mm -hmm. so it's just like all these things to keep track of yeah i don't know if it's because i'm getting old or what no it's, no. it's the volume yeah, it's the volume it is, stuff. It is, it it's is. the volume stuff. yeah there's more things we that we have to keep track of this year than we did before. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. I think that's yeah. the other thing is we're keeping yeah. track of more than, yeah. than had been in the past too. Yeah. But <laughs> yeah, so I can tell I you with respect to the stone group <laughs> stuff, Sue searched her computer. I think you found one item for what I for stone group stuff. For, for, for the for billing. billing, maybe yeah. you found like one. I can't remember. Yeah, remember. see one. one yeah, thing. If, if it's not in yeah. QuickBooks, it's probably in There's the hard nothing. copies or it so wasn't billed. Yeah. So if you update QuickBooks, all that old information should stay. It stays. It, does stay. it absolutely it stays. stays. So did they just like get a new, brand new program? The the only way that they would have had this happen is if at some point somebody like I'll say upgraded QuickBooks and didn't keep the old company file, like they just started over, like okay. brand new install, we're yeah. starting fresh. But there's data um, in there from 2014. Yeah. So I have data in there okay. from 2014, but no one went to through the customer center mm -hmm. to create an invoice, which to me is the only logical step. You're yeah. going to send a bill, create an invoice. You miss the the, yeah. the connected the relationship between the one invoice versus the other one. You don't do it that way, which is why we're doing it right. the way we're right. doing it now. Um, but even doing running all the other reports, there's no indication that anyone was sent any bills. Yeah. So they they yeah. either did it by hand. Prior to two, four, 2014, right. which, is, that's what which is a very real yeah. possibility, or they had because QuickBooks, but I they found letters in the computer from Lisa mm. that are by hand. Yeah, you know, it's a letter. Yeah, yeah. you owe us a Yeah, I'm I'm gonna say yeah. they we're we're gonna have a, a bit of a Sherlock Holmes yeah. exercise that we're gonna have to go through boxes and go okay. This is a bill from McCarthy Engineering for something with Stone Group. Okay, mark it with a tag write it down on a piece of paper this date yeah. this property this amount yeah and then try and reconcile okay mccarthy billed these we were able to find bills that we originated as a township for these here's the gap yeah like it's it's going to be involved but it's yeah. probably going to be a considerable amount of money considering that yeah. 2004 to 2010 2014 yeah. whatever yeah um was a large chunk of their building exercises that's when a lot of the revenue yeah. would have been coming in yeah. And like I said, you know, they probably would have had a lot of bills from a, or from an engineer in the beginning, mm -hmm. but then once they had their roads. Well, that's down, what I, that's they, what I mean. Like your, your billing you know, isn't going to be a straight line. Once they started it's just be... building houses, you're not going to be that many. But yeah. now when I was up um, stairs the other last week looking for something, um, there are financial boxes up there. I'm, I'm going to say at least from 2010. And that's another thing that somebody needs to go through that mm -hmm. stuff and then shred it get it shredded mm. because we don't need to keep that yeah yeah so all financial the stuff right. and tax stuff we don't i don't think i have to look at the records um whatever that thing is called the records retention yeah, thing, the retention yeah. schedule yeah. that um yeah. we don't need to keep all that stuff forever yeah yeah and and the if you have it and somebody requested with a right to know, you got to provide it. Yeah. If you don't yeah. have it, you don't got to provide it. Yep. Yeah. So I will go through whatever is up there. I think down the road, if anything, we may have to contact Light and Heigl and ask them for any old bills to see if I'm not finding they, any evidence. They, they yeah, may not have, have it either yeah. for the same reason yeah. the records retention stuff. They may yeah. only have to retain it for 10 years. Right. So I'll take 10 years. Yeah. I'm, sorry, yeah. I'm, about, yeah. I'm just saying they may yeah. be able to go back to 2012, yeah. not 2004. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So anyway, so this okay. is something that's probably going to take me. Oh, this is going to, this is going to take time. This yeah. is going to be, we, we put a good, yeah. good pot of coffee on and have a bunch of us in and we just start sifting through boxes. Yeah. 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 McCarthy stuff we're used to, and we're able mm -hmm. to decipher. Mm -hmm. And like I said, I already, as soon as I got that information, I already sent the email to Janice. So she's going to be able to get me the stuff from 2014. And she was lovely enough to highlight it mm -hmm. and send us like, I, yeah, <laughs> she sent us a spreadsheet. It was wonderful. Good. Okay, next item on the agenda is the update to the saldo fees and stormwater management ordinance fees. Um, I would say for the, the effort of time, let's move that to the March <laughs> meeting because that's okay. that's probably not an exaggeration. Yeah. That's probably going to be a good 30 to 60 minute exercise yes. in itself. Um, we could hash that out. To yeah, we can do a little bit of yeah. 
preemptive stuff on our own yeah. and come into it armed, but it's it's not going to be a, a short yeah. discussion. No, no, and it, it's it's keeping up with what the outside costs are. Mm -hmm. yep. So that way we don't have a shortfall for things that people yeah. are paying for correctly. Um, next is the Western Burks Joint Zoning Ordinance Amendments. Uh, North Heidelberg Township uh, was requesting to add uh, solar farms as an exceptional use within highway commercial, light industrial, and general industrial. Uh, Marion has a highway commercial and a general industrial, which is Dutch Valley. A zoning hearing was held last Thursday for the exceptional use. And uh, it no, was... That, so if you want to put a solar farm in one of those districts, you need a zoning oh, hearing I'm, to I'm, grant I'm it. sorry. I, I, I know jumped, it's I jumped so ahead. confusing. It's so confusing. I jumped ahead. It's okay. <laughs> so if you, if you wanted to do that, you'd have to have a zoning hearing, uh, as Sue indicated. However, the hearing for the actual amendment to be added was held last Thursday. Jim and I were in attendance and it passed unanimously. Mm -hmm. So that will be added to the uh, the joint uh, comprehensive zoning. No, Thank you, John. <laughs> yep. Okay, next is the Berks County Conservation District Memorandum of Understanding. Um, apparently we need to sign that every five years or so. The last one was signed in 2017. Uh, they want comments or concerns by the end of February, February 28th. Uh, then they will finalize the MOU and send for execution. Um, Do you read it over? You uh, signed it. I, yeah. yeah, it had yeah. I, I briefly read it and it, I didn't see anything There's out of the ordinary or yeah. different. And I know in 2017 when I got it, I emailed Andy and was like, what is this? Yeah. And then he sort of went over it and was like, just sign it. <laughs> yeah. It has the normal it, recitals in it. Yeah. yeah. It was, there, there wasn't anything that concerned me in it. So yeah. I'd, I'd say, well, Thursday night, we'll, if we need a motion to sign it, we'll motion, motion to motion sign to it. Sign and, it. And then when it comes in, it, I think it's got it signed. Okay. Well, in that case, I'll make a motion to sign the Berks County Conservation District, District Memorandum of Understanding. Second. Roll call, Peter. Aye. Irene. Aye. Jim. Aye. Okay. Okay, next is a request for donation that we received from the Conrad Weiser High School Class of 2022 graduation party. I'm trying to remember if we took that one off mm -hmm. as one of the donations. I think we, we did. Um, we so, had given them $50 in prior years. Yeah. So uh, I would say just received on that one. Okay. No, no further action unless you two feel strongly about something else was. Uh, next is a letter of support request received from the Western Berks Ambulance. Um, basically, gist of this is they want um, essentially a letter from us saying that we're we're in support of them operating. Um, there's no like financial contribution required or anything like that. It's just a letter saying that we value the service that they bring to the the area and the community, which I'm okay with sending a letter of support. I'm fine with that. So yeah, I'll make a motion, motion. to uh, authorize the letter of support request we received from Western Berks Ambulance. You want me to make up a letter and then you guys look over it? Yes, yes. Oh, that'd be perfect. Thank you. I'll second it. Oh, wait, right. Peter, sorry. <laughs> it's okay. Jim, second. Roll call, Peter. Hi. Irene. Hi. Jim. Hi. Okay. Okay, next is the Peace Outs Trustees Insurance and Retirement Services Disclosure Statement. They'd like us to adopt it as our disclosure statement and post it on our website. Um, I've not read through this. If it's anything like the other ones in the past that I've seen, it's, again, it's pretty standard stuff and I can post it on the website. That's, it's easy. Um, so just need a motion uh, so I'll, I'll make a motion to adopt the uh, disclosure statement for the PSATS Trustees Insurance and Retirement Services uh, as our disclosure statement and then authorize the posting to the website. Second. Roll call, Peter. Aye. Irene. Aye. Jim. Aye. Okay. I think you guys have to sign it. Uh, maybe? Yeah, if we do, we'll, I'll, we'll sign it. But. Okay, next is the John Deere Financial Automatic Payment Enrollment. A uh, motion is needed to authorize this so that we don't have to write checks out for uh, the, the loader or any of the other John Deere equipment. Next. Wait, 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 Doc. So that just is for the newest purchase. Yeah. This is this something you guys want to do? Whether I stick a stamp on it or yeah. it goes through an electronic, there's, okay. a, there's still a fee associated with it. Um, it. It's entirely up to you. In some ways, I wouldn't mind doing it automatically because then we don't have to worry about any late fees. Yeah. I'm, yeah. I mean, typically, yeah. I, I would have to say I, I'm pretty diligent about getting the bills out on time. 
but there, there's a benefit to set it and forget yeah. it. So I, I'd say next step on this. Let's, let's, take let's, it out every month. That's all. Yeah. Right. No, no, they do it. It's all they a do matter. It. Yeah. 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 No, so, I mean so. the balance on your balance. Yeah. Too. Yeah. yeah. Which it is. But, because, yeah. You'll see it on the yeah, next statement. We always get it as a statement. And, and so every month the, the checkbook is balanced yeah. to the penny. Yeah. I so, just usually I'm tearing my hair out and making phone calls. Make life easy. Yeah. Yeah. I'll make a motion to authorize the use of the John Deere financial automatic payment enrollment. Second. And there's a form. I guess I think I could sign it. Roll call, Peter. Hi. Irene. Hi. Jim. Sorry. Hi. Okay. Uh, other item is Paul B. credit application. Uh, this is something that Butch brought to our attention that he would be able to essentially have a line of credit open on behalf of the township at Paul B., where he'd be able to pick up items needed for road crew and other maintenance, and then they would send us a, a bill essentially in the mail, and we'd actually get a, I think it's like a 2% discount on oh, that if we paid on time. Uh, we have a similar arrangement with Ace Hardware in Myerstown. We just need a motion to authorize this. So um, I'll make a motion to authorize the credit application at Paul B. Second. We'll call Peter. Hi. Irene. Hi. Jim. Hi. Okay, we already covered the Conrad Advisor Youth Baseball. And the last item on the agenda is the street sweeping. Um, have we contacted industrial grounds maintenance yet? No, I need a motion. For okay. This. Let me do that. Okay. So I'll, I'll make a motion to authorize the secretary to contact industrial grounds maintenance for their availability and cost for doing the street sweeping this year. Second. We'll call Peter. Hi. Irene. Hi. Jim. Hi. Okay. We're going to want to do this before the car show as close to before the car show as we can so that it's as clean as possible. Let me know when you want that. That's the 14th. We usually do it in May. Yeah, May 14th is the car show. Your town. What, in June? Okay. okay. So we'd want to do it probably like May the 7th? Like, so the car show is on the 14th, which is the second Saturday in May. So we'd want to do it probably sometime during the first week or during that week leading up to the car show. Yeah, that's 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 why I'd like to do it either the week leading up or the week before is to that point we can go out once, put a bunch of signs up. We can put up two signs. Uh, street sweeping this day, car show the other day. When the street sweepers come through, we just take the one sign down and leave the other one up. Um, Mervin, can they use fire company water again? Okay. Yeah. Thank you, Mervin. They just got notified. Yeah. Okay. okay. But uh, other than that, we'll need some volunteer time. I can I can help out and staple up some some no parking signs. We have the no parking signs. We just need to print out. I need the to little, print out the, yeah, thing. the little thing. There's that we 60 of them. To, yeah. Um, but okay. you had something you wanted to? Uh, that's yeah. Super, supervisor comments in just a second, but yes. Um, so anything else on the street sweeping? No. Okay. So okay. we'll move into the comments. Um, we need uh, new mower blades on the the big mower. Uh, Butch got some prices. It's about two hundred and fifty bucks. Uh, a little longer. Yeah. Uh, if, if I get if I get them. Yeah. So he got, he called a couple of places. One place declined. The other one said, like, no, just call okay. this, this other place. Yeah. Um, and the third place was the place that the other place referred him to. So at this point, I'd like to authorize, I'll make a motion to authorize. You can't. Push. It's not on the agenda. Ah, crap. That's right. Um, I can put it on Thursday. Okay, put it on Thursday night, mm -hmm. and we'll do it on Thursday night. But it's a two hundred cost of two hundred and fifty dollars. And what was the the company? Stevenson Equipment. Stevenson. Okay. Okay. Wow. So if you can if you can add that on the agenda. I will. Yeah, that way we can get. Is there something I'm going to probably take off? Okay. <laughs> Thank you. Yeah. Okay. Um, the only other thing was we talked about the potential for a part-time like office assistant. And uh, one of the things that we brought up just in com conversation was we don't have a leash ordinance in the township for oh. dogs. That seems like a gap that we might want to look at. We, we do mm -hmm. not. Um, that we should ask like Andy 
uh, I can send an email to Andy asking for some examples from some other municipalities, but that seems like a, a pretty basic and one. This came we... up because I had a phone call asking if we had one because a dog got on their property and got in a trap and got hurt. And the owner who lives on another property had a fit. So I was asked if we had a leash, leash ordinance. I said, oh, well, we don't. So, so just something to consider. That's that's an easy one that we didn't didn't know we didn't, really have. didn't have. So yeah. now that we know, we should work on getting that on the books because it's pretty pretty basic. Okay. So I'll reach out to Andy and get some examples of some neighboring yeah. municipalities that he covers, and that should be an easy one to to get get in. I think uh, maybe by the summer, I could probably sit down with the book of ordinances and mm -hmm. start cataloging cataloging what we have and what we don't have. And you wanted to do something with the street stuff too. Yeah. So I, I hopefully we'll be able to catalog it. And if at some point, if we want to start scanning them in, uh, um, hopefully we could do that this summer too. Yeah. I, yeah. I mentioned to Sue the one day that I stopped in when I brought the, the plywood in was we can pick up, we don't have to do it right away, but you can just get a scanner that does high speed duplex yeah. scanning. And just we get somebody like if one of your kids is willing yeah, to volunteer Josh. or somebody can come in yeah. or you just start feeding these things through and it just scans both sides and saves a PDF. We'll have right. to see if we have copies of them because they're pasted in a book. Yeah. Okay. Okay. Yeah. There's like well, paste, yeah. We will, for some of them, we, we might have to get creative. Yeah. Um, yeah. One of the things that I'll look and see, I'll play around with it, but there are apps that you can get on your phone where you can just scan something and it'll, it'll save it as a PDF. Um, so I'll, cross I'll, that bridge then. I'll, I'll see, I'll, yeah, as I say, we'll cross that bridge when we get yeah. there. Um, but it might not be a bad idea to, to pick up a relatively inexpensive document scanner for the purposes of taking bulk and scanning it in. Um, cause just about everything that we have that hasn't been done on the computers natively for the past, like five or six years yeah. exists in paper format. Yeah. yeah. So it would be nice to be able to find it on the website too. Yeah. Or yeah. if nothing else, it'll make right to know easier. Yeah. If somebody says, I have this question. Phone calls. Yeah. yeah. That you could just be like, oh, let me look. And then I go, ordinances, yeah. this, this, this. Okay. Yeah, we do. It's this number, blah, blah, blah. Or nope, we don't have one of those. So those are the, the things that I had on my, my comments. Irene, do you have any comments? Um, just the consideration of possibly moving out the back desk into what we used to use for the AA room. I'd probably need just a, another uh, small printer and um, a lock on that door because Sue needs this space here. The other thing is um, getting special holders for maps. We don't, right now they're just, in, it's in such a disarray. We don't want that information to get damaged. So if we could start looking at some pricing on map holders. So I, I know they yeah. make um, cardboard. So upstairs and in here, we have plans that yeah. are rolled up. Mm -hmm. yeah. You can buy cardboard boxes that are essentially like a map. You roll it up, you stick yeah. it in the cookie. Yeah. You know, and then you yeah. label it. Yeah. Um, okay. So, so again, like storage. Make, yeah. 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 Make it more organized because yeah. the ones upstairs are just on top of the filing cabinets. Yeah. Okay. It, she really needs the space so that she could use it the way it's going to help her keep things organized and filed. And right now it's just for the two oh, of yes. us, it's like, yes. I put, I, I thought I shredded a document that we needed for the I audit. Found it on the floor. And then, yeah, <laughs> then we found it after the fact, we were able to get a copy of it quickly enough, but yeah. it was like, oh my God, I just shredded a document, but, but it's just space is, is such an issue. Yeah. So let's, let's look at that. Cause like the actual act of moving a desk over to the AA room, it's other than right. losing the, the extra meeting space, which yeah. hasn't been used since AA stopped meeting in here, um, not all that hard. Right, so, right. Um, that would free up a little bit of filing space in there. And we could do some other like non-sensitive filing over there, set right. up a rack. And... Most, most of the stuff I, I have, well, the stuff in the desk is sensitive, mm -hmm. uh, but the stuff, um, most of the stuff goes into the file room anyway, yeah. so. Okay, Jim, any comments for you? Uh, well, as far as your leashes, there there is a leash requirement in town hall. So. Yeah, I think there's something like state of Pennsylvania. There's it's a leash a state law. There's a state leash law. But law. there's leash law. There's yeah. like I said, to Sue, oh, I had yeah. somebody that their dog got loose and killed one of my chickens. Um, and the cop came out, and was talking to the officer, and he was like, "There's only so much that we can do because like we don't have a dog catcher." Um, 
there's not any like laws locally that really do this. There's only like the, the state ones, which you can't really enforce against. Um, so it was just kind of a weird, complicated thing where some of the stuff does exist, but it, it may not be enforceable at our level without something like a leash ordinance. No, we should do that. Yeah. yeah. I do have one more thing. I know we had sent out with the pump out stuff with all that stuff, we sent out a letter. How about considering doing like twice a year an FYI letter? So, um, you know, a newsletter we could tag on some of the MTCA information onto it. But so, for example, spring is coming up. People should not be mowing and discharging their debris into the street. Um, no, we used don't. to do a newsletter, and then yeah. the one board decided not to do it. It's okay. I'm, I'm not opposed to a right. newsletter. It's just it's a lot of we have to make sure that we're able to put the effort, the time, and the yeah. effort into doing yeah. it at a routine schedule, yeah. so that like every March it goes out for right. like, hey, don't forget about your glass clippings, or every right. August or September, right. don't shovel your snow into the exactly. street. Or, you know. Exactly, exactly. Snow <laughs> removal, grass clippings. You know, please be cognizant of speed limits, things like that. I, I think it'd be worthwhile if you have any prior examples, Sue, if you have anything. I think there's some yeah, computer. And then, then print it up so, so we, could, we could continue that. Because doing that twice a year, I, I've calendared a whole bunch of stuff. Just getting it out and, and updating it, I think that that's worthwhile. Um, because there, it's the minor issues. Uh, burn ordinance, okay? So like people aren't familiar. I drove down a road the other day and there was a huge flames coming up. And I'm thinking they did not call the office, did they? I'm just going to keep on driving and go do what I need to do. So just keeping things like that, like on the radar and letting people know. So and as far as an employee goes, uh, we might want to look into a, talking to the school district about an intern. Yeah. And it could be a paid intern. Uh, but they probably have some pretty good ideas of who would be very capable of assisting yeah. you. And those kids are so computer Sorry. prolific. Yeah, if nothing, there, if nothing there, else, there, it would give us a broader pool that we could sort of put something yeah. out and get resumes. But the school could send us resumes for people if, as an internship sort of capacity. So we don't need somebody in here like 30 hours a week necessarily. But even if we had somebody for like 10 or 15, that would be right. probably world changing for Sue. So that's, yeah, that's a very good, very good idea, Jim. Um, I think it's possible. I was going to say, Kelly, I think you probably have the most contact with the school district out of anybody currently yeah, in this yes. room. Right. Yeah. yeah. And then well, I know who, that who was it before, too. Uh, but my, my, my point okay. was, like, if you, if you have a student who's politically, right. was there a college for political, whatever. Like, yeah. But here's here's the problem. We're not that person right. because we're... We, do we yeah, need the child <laughs> safety? Yeah, but here's, here's the problem with having the students. They could come, I want to say the hours are between 11 to 12. Monday through Friday, you have to have child clearance stuff. Cause I have, I have her number and all this stuff because there was a couple of students that were interested in doing an internship, but because of the hours, um, it was something, but um, they're essentially gonna be doing work, but I don't think it's the work that the students think that they're gonna be doing. They wanna be participating in government stuff, not necessarily right. doing clerical stuff. Clerical well, stuff. well yeah. government is clerical. Right, right, right. Rip that band right. off real fast. Business program at the school? I'm not so sure. So, so, I think so. Yeah. yeah, so, so if you, because I have her information, she could reach out to me again too, because now it's a different scenario because it would be stable hours, but they, because they're allowed to leave the school, I'm going to say either at like 11 or 12, they could either leave for like an hour or two, or they could leave for the afternoon. Well, some, some work right. study thing, because like I went right. to Votech when right. I was in high school. Right, so, but. so, but it would mean that either myself or Sue would have to go through the child's abuse clearance if I have that stuff because of my job it's really not much of anything it's a short thing you, you have you to do guess. online yeah. but yeah, but, <laughs> yeah. I, I worked in the cafeteria for a few months so right. I had that I had years and years and years right. ago but tell her she could reach out to me again this isn't something new and different but it would be clerical work and again, not, not to mention if yeah. there is an interest, we could have them do things like they can't sit up here on the board, but they right. could be present for board meetings and right. things like that if they but really want to. No get... one had any interest yeah. in doing that when 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 I talked to them last year because I talked to Ms. Simons about it a little bit too. Um, but again, that would be more need for more space in the other room because we don't need to be bothering Sue. I feel so bad when I'm here with her because I have to bother her for some information. <laughs> Um, but it would be stuff like, you'd be like, this is what I need you to do and, and do it. And we don't want to detract from, from, from Sue's work. So 
You can always have me do some stuff too when I'm here, but then I'm usually tearing my hair out. You're, and so you're, stuff. you're busy on other stuff. Yeah, the bottom line is we have enough, we have enough work volume to go yeah. around to warrant an extra yeah, set of hands. But... It's going to take forever. Yeah. Yeah. I just want to show you know, like, well, it's, I mean, there's such a volume upstairs. It would be that a decision be of whether you want shredding. to hire a shredding no, shop to come. Yeah. Or, Cause there's such a volume. Yeah. yeah. This I is mean, something that I don't think anybody has en done any sort of document destruction for years and years this is, and years. Yeah. And years. Well, it's I'm going to thank written. them for not doing any document destruction. Well, yeah. 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 This is, this yeah. is going to be beneficial for us, but yeah. going forward, we need to be in the posture of if yeah. we need to retain a record for 10 years. Exactly. Every year, yeah, we go through, and these are the ones that these have expired. That got shredded. Yeah. We put it off to the side. The next meeting, we motion for its destruction, and then we get it destroyed. Yeah. So, well, if you got everything on, if we scan all this stuff in, yeah, it, it may become a moot point in the future. Yeah, I think yeah. You, you, you have to. Yeah. You, well, you have to keep physical records because, yeah. like, I, with work, yeah. like with the banking stuff. If there is a physical copy of something, you have to retain the physical mm -hmm. copy along with the digital for the same retention period. With that said, though, it's the digital one is going to be a lot more accessible and it's it's going to be a lot more transportable and it's a lot easier right. to go Search through the life cycle than it is to, any, to do any other way. Yeah. But um, that doesn't also mean that we can't start asking for things that don't have to have a physical component. Like the plans are probably going to be sent over and there's going to be both a physical and a digital copy. We have to keep plans we have, forever. And we have to keep forever. them forever. But uh, there are going to be other things that if it is sent over in a purely digital format, we do not have to create a physical right. artifact. Well, that's, not, that's another thing. I get all these emails and, and I you have, have to print, print them. everything out. Yes. So <laughs> kill a tree. Yeah. So we'll, we'll be able to streamline that a little bit, but it's, it, the need for space for filing is never going to go away entirely, but it will be yeah. lessened right. once we have everything yeah. scanned in and we go yeah. through and destroy any of the old stuff that we don't need anymore. <sighs> Like I could tell, I've created two boxes for the financial stuff alone from every year. It's it's two two boxes. That's it. And okay. anything else, Jim? No, I'm good. Sue. Nothing. Perfect. Okay, I'll make a motion to adjourn the meeting. The time is now 11:30 a.m. Thank you. Second. <laughs> Peter, Irene, roll call. Peter. Hi. Irene. Hi. Jim. Hi. Okay. Meeting adjourned. Thank you, everyone. Okay. <clears throat> Thanks.